hear anything else, especially from the NOPD as they head into um, the areas of New Orleans East, Michoud, um, those areas, please let us know if you've got any updates. Will do. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So thank much. you, Fox State. Thank you, Colin. Thank, thank you. you. David, you. Uh, Yep. Guys, I want to yeah. just talk about a couple of things real quick, and I'll talk about what we're seeing here on Viper, but uh, I, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I'm getting, just as so you know, uh, St. Tammany Parish is reporting, and, and again, this is mainly rural, but Highway 1088 at Highway 36 is impassable due to downed trees and debris. That is from the tornado that moved in off the lake earlier around Big Branch. Uh, so impassable Highway 36 at 1088 due to trees and debris, according to fire dispatch uh, in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, that's the latest on that. What you're looking at here on Viper is our rotation path. All right. And and where you see the yellow, that's intense. The green is weaker and I've kind of isolated it. And you can see that there's Araby and let's come in even a little bit. Close. Well, first of all, let me widen this out just a bit. And you can see, remember, I came on the air with you guys and we started seeing the circulation near Lafitte and it got stronger and it moved across the West Bank and a Viper is confirming. I remember we heard windows blown out in Jefferson Parish and Gretna. There's Harvey, Marrero, Gretna. So the, the, the tornado was on the ground there and then it likely moved in this location across Algiers. I have not heard anything about damage in Algiers. I didn't hear if Colin said anything about that. There's the Holy Cross neighborhood. Here's the Lower Ninth Ward. And then there is Chalmette. And then here's Araby, right? So Araby is right there, Holy Cross, Lower Ninth. We know there is extreme damage uh, in this particular area. And we can confirm that with our rotation tracker. Uh, then we followed the storm uh, into the east. Now, one thing to note, we haven't heard much, but if you look here, there's Lake Forest. And, and there you see, there's Old Gentilly Road, Almanastra uh, Avenue, and then you have uh, Chef on the other side of that. Notice that we kind of lose that strong rotation tracker as it moved over the east. So I'm not, I'm not saying there's not damage there because we don't know, but we didn't get as, as strong of a signature. Then it started to increase again uh, once it got over the twin spans and then moved toward Eden Isles. And again, we have not heard uh, of anything in southeastern St. Tammany Parish right now in the Slidell area if there was any damage uh, reported there. And then the tornado warning that's still ongoing in Pearl River County, we kind of see that the, the circulation is weakening to the east of Interstate uh, 59. Let me go ahead and just while we have this up, I want to go ahead and get uh, the latest radar look on that storm. Again, that looks like it is continuing to weaken as it pushes well to the east of Picayune. So good news there tonight is it looks like the severe weather threat uh, is ending across southeast Louisiana. We're watching where I'm watching you Plaquemines Parish. We still got some strong storms there. We're still watching Hancock. All right, we have storms west of Bay St. Louis and maybe a little bit of a notch still showing up to the south and west of Catahoula there. Uh, but overall, it's over rural areas of Hancock County if there is still any kind of a weak circulation there. Uh, but the big story, obviously, is uh, the damage that has occurred in Orleans and St. Bernard and as well as parts of Jefferson Parish uh, tonight. And we can see that very clearly uh, with our shear path uh, showing up on Viper. Uh, the other, well, let me go ahead and again isolate the strongest portion of that. And uh, that's the tornado through the New Orleans area. And then here was uh, showing even stronger rotation. This was the tornado that formed over the causeway and then moved across a big branch between Lacombe and Mandeville. And remember, I just said at Highway 1088 and, and Highway 36 is impassable uh, due to the fact that there's debris everywhere. Well, this is a very strong rotation. This was obviously a tornado uh, cutting all the way deep into St. Tammany Parish. And then the circulation weakened as it got to Talashik and then moved across uh, the Pearl River. So this kind of gives you an idea. If you widen this out, that was our two tornadoes tonight. There was also another storm a little while ago that had some pretty good rotation, uh, but it looks like that did not tornado. But this is the tornado that started south of the West Bank below there near Lafitte, cut across the city and then weakening over St. Tammany Parish, and then the second tornado tonight, which, thank goodness, largely stayed over rural areas. Shelly, let's go back over to you. Okay, David, um, we have David Jones, um, Fox 8's David Jones, one of our reporters who is in St. Bernard Parish and joins us now live from Araby. David? 
Yeah, hey, hey, Shelly, so we're walking with first responders right now. They're actually going house by house and making sure that everyone inside is safe. So far, uh, everyone appears to be safe, who we've seen and spoken with. Um, I'll just shine my light over here. We can, we can pan over and just show a bit of debris here over there. You can see, wow, that house is, yeah, that's, that's leveled. I don't know if it's a house or a shed or what. Um, so we're coming up on Alexander Highway or Alexander Ave, excuse me, some water here. Um, you can see, you can see what we're talking about when we say flooding, right? And not to drive through floods. So right now, all of this road around us, I mean, totally, totally submerged. I see it. Steve, look, can we, can we go over to that school bus right over there? You see what I'm talking about? I wish there was a way we could get closer. Maybe you can come up on the grass here and show, wow. Yeah, so got a school bus on its side there. Um, no, it's just the top. No, it's just the top? Okay. So it's just the top of the bus there on its side. Um, if we pan over here to the left, we can see some damage in those homes right over there. Again, we're in Araby, um, St. Bernard Parish. St. Bernard Parish deputies have, have, have actually been out here um, going house by house, kind of a search and rescue um, effort. But the area that we were in on, on St. Claude, I mean, like, just devastation. And we're going we're gonna to go back up there and bring you another live report here in a few minutes, but um, just total devastation there. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna track the path and see, see what, we can, what we can find. But for now, we're live in, uh, in Airby. David Jones, Fox 8, Local First. And I don't know if David could hear me, but I just reached out to some old friends in the Araby area, and they said that they are okay, but that the St. Claude Heights area has seen uh, significant damage. And so that might be what David is referring to there when he mentioned St. Claude, because obviously St. Claude Avenue runs through the lower Ninth Ward, uh, closer to the river, but there's St. Claude Heights in Araby, um, a neighborhood as well. So um, if you're out there and you're listening, you're watching and you know somebody um, that might have some pictures or images, um, obviously don't go out there and try to get it right now, but um, send that in to us to the Fox 8 newsroom if you can. And we're going to go through those images as well. Um, and here's some of that video. And this tornado, when you look at the width of it, I don't remember seeing anything like this in, in so long. David, is, you know, when you look at these images, <sighs> are these similar to what we saw in, was it 2017? Yeah, the New, New Orleans, Orleans East? Yes, the New Orleans East tornado was a large, I believe, multi-vortex tornado in EF3. That was the largest tornado on record to hit Orleans Parish. Uh, and so um, this one's going to be right up there. And I have no doubt about it looking and, and I, I saw a, a picture of it uh, earlier when it was even larger than that. And you could see uh, that that's one image there on a couple of them. You can see what looked like other little tornadoes rotating around uh, the large funnel. And that's what we mean. Multi vortex, multiple spinning areas uh, around the larger tornado. And these are the ones that cause the most damage. It's almost like uh, when you, they're almost like tentacles and they're kind of lashing out with like individual areas of even more intense wind that might be going around the main uh, circulation of the tornado. So that's what's likely caused uh, the most damage tonight. When I look at the rotation path on Viper, uh, it, because of the tilt uh, of the radar and the mapping, it looks like the strongest rotation was over Algiers, but it's probably displaced uh, about a quarter of a mile uh, too far to the west, at least based on what we're hearing as far as damage goes. Uh, so that's probably why it's not chiming exactly with what I'm seeing on radar here, uh, that the worst of this, the tornado went over Araby and just kind of skimmed past right along the parish line, really. It's, it's basically, it looks like uh, the way this thing uh, probably tracked from what we're seeing. And when we talked to Colin Arnold with uh, New Orleans Emergency Operations, he said as far as they could tell at this point from NOPD early reports, going to the Lower Ninth Ward, which is right next door to Araby, while they have 8,000 people without power, I mean, just power outages widespread, um, they did not, you know, there was no observable damage or the words that he used um, in the Lower Ninth Ward. And I think Bruce wants to to chime in here as we're talking about this. Bruce? Yeah, if we can pull up Max 2 uh, from the uh, control room upstairs, take a look at these pictures getting in. I'm kind of doing the social media side of it. If we can pull up Max 2 right now, take a look at this, David. Look at this car oh, that's turned goodness. upside down. Yeah. And look at the devastation of the buildings around it. EF3, EF4, you know, as you mentioned, this is going to be one of the big ones that we may actually, uh, well, you know, in terms of strength, 
from that 17 tornado. Here's one more picture, David. I'm going to put this in as well, and you can see car overturned, but I mean, look at the structure damage. That's a roof sitting next door to an actual home on the ground. So this and, you is know, just a magnificent And, and of course, you need forensic specialists to come in here, you know, that are used to looking at wind damage, but sure. we've seen enough of this, and that is certainly EF2 damage, and probably EF3. Yeah. Uh, EF2 or, or, or possibly uh, on uh, EF3 damage. And what makes it an EF3, David? At what point does it become an EF3? Is it the, the strength of the winds? I'm yes. going to pull up a graphic, David. Oh, you have that I, I, over there? I'll, I'll pull it up. Okay, I'll we're going to pull that up on um, Max, Max two. 2. That's what I was trying to get to, Shelley, yeah. that you were asking to give you some perspective. The New Orleans East tornado, again, was an EF3. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think the winds were around 120 or 125 miles per hour uh, with that particular storm when it went through. But, I mean, clearly, uh, this, is, uh, a, this is large tornado damage uh, that we're seeing uh, based on my years of experience of, uh, of looking at these particular storms. I'm looking at tornadoes, I should say. Uh, I do want to just update everybody. Um, there are no warnings. All warnings for Mississippi have expired. All warnings for Louisiana. There are no tornado warnings uh, in, a, in effect uh, right now. So there is the uh, scale. So yeah, 136. Okay, uh, the, in the New Orleans East tornado was on, if you want to call it, the low end of the EF3 scale. As I recall, I had winds around 135 to 140 uh, miles per hour. Uh, certainly, uh, I think we're seeing EF2 damage based on more just those preliminary photos that we're seeing tonight and the fact that uh, cars have been tossed around like toys and are upside down and we have uh, some homes that have been uh, completely destroyed. And David, oh, we do, can you guys hear me? Hello, hello? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna tell you that um, the St. Bernard Parish President, Guy McGinnis, we have some, um, an interview with him that was taken just a short time ago. So let's go ahead and listen to that. We have widespread damage here in St. Bernard Parish. Uh, the fire department and sheriff's department are going through and doing search and rescue. Um, we still have some places we need to get to and getting reports. So until uh, we get a full assessment, um, we won't really know. But uh, um, we're, all of our people out there working very hard to make sure that our community is safe. No major injuries at this time. And you guys are busing residents to the Civic Center? We're, we're set, setting up a staging area. We're contacting uh, John Ram, a Homeland Security guy. He's already set up. We're going to stage somewhere along Center Street or in Araby. Uh, we will pick people up and bring them to a shelter that have been affected by the storm. Okay. Yeah, and that was Guy McGinnis, the St. Bernard Parish president, um, speaking obviously very early on in um, this situation, um, this devastating event that has happened tonight with a major tornado touching right, down. Just, we're on the wrong source there. Go back to Max 1. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know where that's coming from, but that's, we need to, okay, that's, um, hold on a minute, that's not good. So let me fix that real quick. Okay, there are no tornado warnings in effect. That is what you're looking at there is, uh, again, the rotation path as the storm moved from the West Bank uh, through St. Bernard Parish. Sorry, Shelley, I just needed to correct it. I had a bad graphic on the air. Yeah, so Guy McGinnis, the St. Bernard Parish president, was talking about how they have set up um, a staging area right near Center Street in Araby, and they, the parish, um, you know, emergency rescue people will be busing people to the Civic Center, people who need to be. At this point, he says no word of any major injuries, but this is still very early on, and you can see that some structures, homes, businesses have been leveled, especially when we look um, in these images right here. And Rhonda, our producer, who are we going to next now? Okay, so Fox 8's Rob Masson is on the North Shore. He's been driving around in the Lacombe area, and he joins us now live by phone. Rob? Hey, Shelley, we've been uh, watching the reports. David was tracking that uh, water spout on the lake that uh, appeared to be moving in toward uh, the Big Branch area, just a little bit west of Lacombe, up toward Pearl River. We can't tell you, we saw some tree damage along I-12, just a little bit west of Lacombe, but the interstate is perfectly passable. I'm now driving through an area west of Lacombe, and it looks like uh, a very large portion of this part of St. Tammany between 
Macomb and Mandeville is without power at this hour. They're checking with friends and sources in this area. They say they've not seen any damage. The um, St. Tammany Sheriff's Office has deputies out looking for damage. They have found some trees down along Highway 36, a little bit east of Abita Springs. And as I said, there's some tree damage along Interstate 12, just a little bit west of Lacombe, but the interstate is passable. There are no reports of injuries at this point, but it looks like several hundred people are without power from that storm system that moved through here probably about 45 minutes ago. Again, deputies are out looking for damage. We do not, do not have any reports of any serious damage or injuries at this point, just some tree damage along Interstate 12 and along Highway 36, Shelley. Thanks so much, Rob, um, for that report. And please stay safe out there. Uh, as you heard him say, um, several hundred power outages in the Lacombe area. Amanda Roberts, um, we saw David Jones in Araby a little while ago. Amanda Roberts is also in the Araby area in St. Bernard Parish, and she now joins us live. Amanda, can you tell us where you are and what you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. We're here at Benjamin and Patricia Street right here in Araby. Um, and all of the power is out. It is just incredibly dark right now. People are starting to come out of their homes. This is home behind us here, uh, pretty much devastated here. You can tell we are looking into the, the kitchen, it looks like. Um, but I was speaking with the folks earlier, and uh, you all have a pretty incredible story of survival. Uh, do I understand that this is your house, sir? My house, yes. How are you feeling? Um, I'm glad my son is alive. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, can you tell me what happened? Um, well, my my son's mother had called, and, and of course I had I had walked to what was the front the side door, and I'd opened the door. And I grew up in Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee, and I knew that it got very quiet. And then and it got it was raining, and it stopped. And I knew that's you know that that's time. So I shut the door, and he was sitting on the couch. And anyway, so I told him to put the iPad down, and then we left and ran down the hallway. And I could hear it uh, so loud, and, and then I was talking to my ex-wife. She was on the phone. I told her to be quiet. And around, this is a firewall. The stove was there. There On the back side was a big, large master bathroom. And then when uh, there's a small bathroom in there where just the toilet was, and we went in there, and when it hit, I could feel it, and then it went to pull me. Uh, my feet started coming off the ground, and I pushed my son down, and then, and then it was gone, and my feet hit the ground again. So... So you were lifted up into the air. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Because it caused the, the vortex, you know, the vortex from it to pull me out. Because it was, we were enclosed by walls. It's only two feet by two feet in this small it was just a small a water bathroom. Closet. Yeah, water closet. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Were you just holding on to your son? Yeah, I was sheltering him. I was over. I had him underneath me. Yeah. I mean, I was cowering over him. I'm a pretty big guy, so. <laughs> so. But there is a lot of debris that if you were in that water closet. Uh, if I had gone, what you can't see is that there. I mean, you have to understand the frame and structure around it, and the firewall right here. That's what protected us because it came from this way, and that's the that's the guy the guest bathroom. Had I gone in there, if you go and look at the front of it, there's a hitch sticking through the front wall of it, into that room, into that bathroom. Looking at this now, going through what you all have gone through, did you need help getting taken out, being rescued? Oh yeah, they, the, my neighbor across the street, the gentleman right across over there, and, and then uh, and then St. Bernard Sheriff's. Uh, deputies helped us out. What was that like? We couldn't get out. We couldn't. What was that like? I just wanted my son out because it was there's you, you see the power lines they go over the top. In, in other words, that bathroom is straight up and those power lines cover the door and everything getting out of it because I mean it's only as big as this block of concrete right there. It's it's, uh, it's only that's how big it is. So, yeah. That's where it went. That's the rest of the house and then see and then it goes there's my car and then the, this gentleman's house that was a two-story house and how we know he's not there is his this his car is not there if it would have been there because it he had a, a, a garage that he pulled into you know when he was home and it, if his car was there he'd be he wouldn't be there i wouldn't think he'd have made it through that because this house is gone no no that was a two-story probably a five thousand square foot house that was right there so you're telling me we don't we haven't seen this house it's it's essentially gone it's gone completely gone it's completely gone to the ground, to the structure. And it was probably at least, it was two-story, maybe three, and uh, at least 
5,000 square feet. Had to be. What do you think of all of this? Well, I grew up in Tennessee. I'm, I'm used to that. We're not, we're, I thought I would come down here and get taken out by a hurricane, but apparently not. <laughs> so uh, I'm just glad my son I, is still kind of, I'm not quite, I'm still kind of a little in shock, I think, a little bit. So I think, were you going through the pieces trying to find what you could? Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know what to think of it, you know. And tell me your name, sir. My name's Jason Dickinson, yeah. All right. Do you recall what time this was? Oh, man, I couldn't, t I could look at my phone and tell you. <laughs> but no. Uh, my, my house burned when I was 10, 9, 10 years old, yeah, on the 4th of July. And it was a it was a historic home, and it burned to the ground, and we lost everything, and that's kind of how I feel at this moment. So, anything else, Jason? You wanted to add? Uh, I just I, I hope everybody else is all right. You, you know, things can be replaced, houses can be rebuilt, people can't. So, and I'm in the funeral business of all things too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad your son is safe. But um, yeah, we. We got a lot ahead of us. Everyone else is too, because that we don't, we still don't know yet. You know, obviously. That's right. We're thankful that your neighbor wasn't home when this yeah, happened. I hope he's not. If his car is not there, then it's, the, yeah. And they're still, you can tell they're still going through the debris over the see behind the shed because it that that was an entire. If you can imagine not being able to see that house at all, you know, and let well standing from this perspective, you could. But if you were standing. You couldn't see that house. That's how big his house was. Is this your truck over here? That's my truck right there. Can you walk us over there and just show it to us? Sure. Just be careful. Ronnie, can Watch see your steps. There's nails in that. Ronnie, Ronnie Newmar is watching us. He just called me. So this is just a huge large debris field that we're just starting to look at here at Benjamin and Patricia in Araby. And Mr. Jason, you said that this is your car. That was just... Yeah, that's my car. It's pretty incredible just looking at all of this. And, and we're looking at all of this in the dark. So keep in mind that we haven't seen really the extent of all of this damage just yet. No, and I would say that, that my car is actually, the only reason it's probably still there is because of the post. There's a metal post behind it that it's actually sitting on. <laughs> they probably kept it from blowing away. Because when it hit, I mean, it was so fast. It was just, I mean, it was like a freight train, and I could feel the house shaking, and, and it was just, uh, and I remember my son looking up at me, and I just told him, I said, put your face down and stay, keep down no matter what no matter what happens. About how much time do you think that was between? It was, a, it was a, in a matter, it wasn't even two minutes. I mean, well, from the house shaking, probably three or four minutes, but when it hit and it happened, seconds, 15, 20 seconds maybe. And that was it. That's how violent that is. And how is is your son doing? He is doing. He's shaking up, but he's he asked. He goes, "Where do we?" He said, "Where? What are we gonna do for snacks? What are we gonna order for snacks?" He's thinking of the important things. Yes. <coughs> yeah, he was. He wanted to know where where he was gonna where, where they were gonna eat. That's what he said. Well, that's why we're looking through this stuff. Maybe find some snacks at least. There's a pizza. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that till now. Yeah. Yeah, we just start to look at piece by piece after yeah. all of this storm. So, it is, uh, it's my brother, my, my dining room table, my brother made for me. His name's Clint Dickinson. And uh, it was Amish grade. And that's, those, are the, those are the legs, those white legs you see. And it was made, and there's no metal in it, and it could stand. It could withstand like 1,600 pounds of pressure on each corner. And uh, he's from, he lives in Tennessee. He's an inc incredible carpenter, and uh, and it's gone. And Brandy, Brandy gave me the chairs. There's one chair. <laughs> Brandy, I, I know I saw a chair somewhere else. Yeah, too. so family gifted. Chair. Brandy's yeah. like Brandy's like the Joanna Gaines black dog. There you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> black dog remodeling. Is this yeah. the roof of your house? What we're seeing right I here? I think so. The yeah. attic. The attic. Yeah. So that looks like it's the so attic. That's all Christmas caught in the tree. There's my Christmas tree, tree up there. there. Right yeah. up we're spotting a Christmas tree <laughs> up in there. Yeah, and that was and that that that's a pine tree that stood in the front. And it was, there's no telling how tall, I mean, it was, it towered above my house. And that's, and that's what, uh, yeah. So it kind of just peeled your house away. It did. It did. It took, I mean, obviously when it came right through here, you know, the, the funny thing is, is the way they turn, if it came from that direction, which doesn't make any sense is how it must have hooked around me when it snagged my house. And then it, it the whole, I mean, because the path had to have gone straight over his, had to.
you think the path of the tornado crossed right over your house? There's no it ha well it it hit it, it, it right came through that field and when it did it hooked around when it hit my house it hooked around because when I tell you you couldn't see that house or any of those homes on the other side that's how big his house was. And it's, and it's level. There's nothing there. So if that tornado did hook, I mean, I, I know we've talked about how lucky and fortunate you are because uh, the place that you were hiding yeah. uh, was a safe spot for you. Yeah. And if that tornado hooked just right around your house, to, uh, it crossed your mind how how even more lucky you were to survive that? Let me tell you something. The good Lord was definitely, there's no doubt. Because I almost went to, and I just knew that, you know, where I grew up and you just go to the smallest room in the house, even if it's a closet in the middle where you have the four structures around you, and that's where you go. Bathtub's not always the best place, folks. <laughs> so, because otherwise it would be, we wouldn't be here. No. Well, I'm sure your family is really uh, thankful. Yes. Uh, How, uh, were you worried for them this whole time? We got over here quick. We made it through the uh, cops, ran through power lines. Um, uh, when I walked up to their block, I didn't even recognize the neighborhood. I, I didn't know where I was because everything was gone. It's scary, really but scary. Driving up here, did you know that they were okay or, or yeah. were you just? Yeah, I knew that they had made it we and I didn't know that they were, yeah, I didn't know that time. they were out of the house yet. They had to get pulled out. So I knew they were trapped in there and I didn't know how they made it. I mean, everything's gone except for the middle wall in the house. It scared the hell out of me. Goodness. Anything else you all wanted to add? No. All right. Um, so it's just a really incredible scene, incredible stories right now as we're really just trying to figure out, picking up the pieces. People are literally just combing through houses right here. Um, and it seems like uh, we're getting moved to another location because there might be a natural gas leak. Um, so, hey, Tommy, Tommy. We want to back up. Everyone's telling us to back up here. Um, it seems like there's some, might be a natural gas leak. I know there's a, a lot of power lines down. Um, so this is still an emergency and evolving situation here. Uh, after a tornado seems to have touched down here in Araby. All right, with that, we'll send it back to you. So much, uh, Amanda. I just wanted to see um, if you're able to stick with us, Amanda. I wanted to talk about exactly where, Absolutely. You, where you are in Araby. So I was looking at the map, and um, when you're when you're driving in from Orleans, you pass the Jackson Barracks, um, which is where the, the National Guard is located. And this looks like it's right past that area. Um, when you were driving in, describe what it was like when you crossed the industrial canal into the lower ninth ward to get into St. Bernard. Explain what you saw driving in. It was just darkness. Uh, we could just tell that this was the place where the storm had touched down because of how dark it was. Um, there is a large traffic problem. A lot of people are trying to get out from homes that we have just kind of shown you uh, of the damage that people have survived and houses that have sustained all of this damage. So there are some people who are trying to get to safe places. So I know we tell everyone to stay off the road in these cases, but I mean, there is a wire down just right here. I could touch it if I really wanted to. We've had to try and tell, we've been telling our crews, people have been, you know, telling us to, to beware of that wire. Um, there might be be a natural gas leak, but it is just darkness right now. I know that there are crews working to, um, you know, evaluate the power lines and, and the uh, light situation here, but there is just so much debris. Uh, I really, the only way that I can describe it is just darkness. There are uh, first responders, police lights that are dotting away as we came into Araby. Um, but really, that's the that's the only light from vehicles that are trying to travel in and travel out, which is this is why in these emergency situations, we always encourage people. This isn't the time to get out of your car and see what's happened here. This is the time for first responders to tend to the situation, you know, gas leaks to try and address these really dangerous power lines that are down, um, you know, and and help this community rebuild. We, we're just in the beginning stages of of really starting to see how extensive this damage is. This home, again, we're here at Benjamin and Patricia Street. This home was nearly entirely demolished just next door, he says, 
Hitler's house was entirely demolished. So with these. Okay, we may have lost uh, Amanda there. Uh, uh, just um, oh. like a specific line through a parish or. All right, we've been listening to Amanda Roberts, who's live for us in Araby. And I just want to kind of give some people who are watching um, some perspective on where we're talking about. So when you drive through the Lower Ninth Ward and then you enter St. Bernard Parish, Araby is right there, um, actually went to grammar school in that neighborhood where Amanda is right now, St. Louise de Marillac. And uh, that neighborhood is Patricia Street and Benjamin off of um, Judge Perez Drive near Alexander. Also hearing from some people who live in the area who say there are some people missing or they just cannot get a hold of them right now. So um, a lot of people wondering about their friends, their loved ones, their relatives. And we heard that there are, um, there is a staging area set up at Center Street in Araby that is busing there. The parish is actually busing residents um, who need shelter at this time who have lost a lot uh, to the Civic Center in Chalmette. David Jones is also in the Araby area um, and we checked in with him a little while ago. We want to check back in with, with him now to see uh, what's the latest in the area where he is. Yeah, Shelly, I heard you say that they were busing residents um, to Chalmette from Center Street and St. Claude. We're actually just down from St. Claude, closer to Orleans. And I was hearing something about the tornado path, maybe going along St. Claude. That might have been a thought. I could definitely see that damage coming in. Um, so I'm going to give you a bit of a picture. We'll walk and talk here, but I'll start off with showing you Bayou Barbell. Um, this is a gym that was destroyed. I mean, you can see like the, the glass is shattered. I'll shine my light there. Hopefully can, that can help a little bit. Um, and uh, WVUE's Fox 8's uh, reporter, Olivia Vidal, her uncle was actually in Bayou Barbell at the time. And uh, while he was inside, he texted her and said, I am, uh, my whole gym is destroyed. The roof caved in, three of the walls collapsed. We were all huddled in the back tool room. Um, everybody's still shaking. The glass blew out the front of the business. There's glass everywhere. The whole roof is laying on top. Uh, all the equipment, the whole area got destroyed. So um, now uh, we're looking over. This is uh, going east on St. Claude. Uh, you can see responders. I mean, th they have a monumental task ahead of them. But right now, responders um, have set up that area. And then they've actually blocked off the entirety of St. Claude on both sides. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a walk and talk here. I can show you some of the debris we've been seeing. Um, down power lines everywhere, everywhere on the ground, um, suspended in the air. I don't know if you can make that out or not. Um, you can see that uh, the entirety of, of St. Bernard uh, Parish you know, responders are out here. Um, you know, firefighters putting on their gear, taking it off. Uh, we've seen search and rescue teams going through the different houses, checking to make sure that everybody's OK. Steve, can we pan over here? To this house I don't know if you, if you could pick that up or not um, you know you can see the entirety of this house I mean just like the entire side portion of this house I should say just demolished I mean wrecked um, yeah I mean this, this damage is, is huge thankfully uh, first responders we were walking with them a little bit earlier and they, they actually checked on the on the resident of that house he gave them the thumbs up said everything was okay Let's walk a little bit over toward here so you can see this is what we're talking about. This is what we're dealing with. Uh, power lines on the ground, power poles completely collapsed from the wind. Um, we're going to do our, do our best here to step over this wire. We don't know if it's live or not. Um, and again, just power lines everywhere. Down and right up there on the corner of um, St. Claude and I want to say that's maybe LeBeau. I think that's LeBeau. Um, that's where we've seen a lot of damage. This an antique store that was over there looked like it was completely destroyed. I mean, it was, it was, it was barely standing. Um, wow. This is, I mean, these, this speaks for itself. This really does. Um, you can see that pile of debris over there on the corner. Friscoville, Friscoville. That was it. Um, so we're walking right in front of uh, this building right now, going toward Friscoville and St. Claude. Just doing my best to step carefully here because we're trying to avoid anything on the ground. I mean, wow. Wow. This is just, this is crazy. You can see that wire on the ground right there. Tons of debris. Again, I was saying this a little bit earlier, but first responders, anyone coming out here um, to rescue people, to clean up in the aftermath of the storm, they're really going to have a monumental task ahead of them. Um, St. Claude, I would say, <laughs> probably going to be closed until, 
until about a minute or until uh, until tomorrow. Excuse me. So, um, Shelly, let's go. Let's go back to you in the studio now. All right. Thanks so much, David. We are going to reset now and bring you Fox 8 News at nine. Fox 8 News is New Orleans most watched late news. Fox 8 Local First starts now. Good evening, I'm Shelley Brown. We are following breaking news at this hour of two tornadoes that were on the ground in our area. Viewers from across the metro area have sent us videos of the tornadoes. As you can see on your screen, David Goldman sent video from near Timberlane in Gretna and Preston Trahan saw it taking form near Chalmette. We do have crews around our viewing area now surveying the damage left behind by those tornadoes. We'll have more from the worst hit areas in a moment. But first, Chief Meteorologist David Bernard joins us now with a closer look at what came through those areas. David, uh, the first thing I'm going to do right now is look at our rotation tracker and this is not going to be exactly right, but it's probably a reasonable estimate based on the ground truth that we have uh, as far as the damage goes. So this tornado, uh, when I came on the air, remember it was near Lafitte and Crown Point. It was right over uh, the northern edge of Lake Salvador and moving to the northeast. And we said, look out Estelle. It was likely on the ground there. We know it was on the ground with the damage, albeit not as bad in Jefferson Parish as what happened in Orleans and St. Bernard has moved through Jefferson Parish on the West Bank and all the way through Araby with a good strong rotation track there uh, near Lake Forest in the east. So more likely than not, this tornado was on the ground for all of 20 miles or a good chunk of that. And that is extremely unusual. Uh, that is a long track tornado. This is a major tornado. Uh, this rivals uh, perhaps may even be worse uh, than the New Orleans East tornado in 2017, but it's certainly just as bad. And, and that was again an EF3 tornado that, as I recall, had winds uh, around 135, 140 uh, miles per hour, perhaps as high as 150. That would be an EF3 scale. Certainly the damage I'm seeing tonight is indicating that we had at least EF2 damage uh, across the area. So that's about how long that was on the ground. Now, uh, then, you know, we picked up more rotation. It kind of weakened. You know, it's a little unclear if we have a lot of damage in New Orleans East. We haven't heard much, but our rotation track is indicating it might have weakened in this area as it moved off to the northeast. The other tornado that formed this, the other one formed over the lake right there over the causeway. This had very strong rotation It moved on shore near Big Branch between Lacombe and Mandeville and then moved on up to near Highway 1088 and Highway 36, which uh, has a lot of trees and debris across it. And there's a lack of power in this part of St. Tammany Parish. Uh, so there you can see on our rotation tracker, Shelley, uh, the two areas of concern, the two tornadoes that moved across southeast Louisiana tonight. Of course, the one that moved across Jefferson Orleans and St. Bernard has caused the most damage and is the most dire situation as we speak tonight. Absolutely heartbreaking, David. Uh, viewers all across our area have been sending us video. We had some video earlier uh, from Brad Sheremy showing us what um, David was calling a multi-vortex tornado crossing through the Lower Ninth Ward through New Orleans East. And David Jones is actually in the, the St. Claude neighborhood, St. Claude Heights, I believe, um, with a look at the damage there. But there is a St. Claude Heights neighborhood that is located in Araby. Yeah, yeah, Shelly, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm in that neighborhood. I'm right off St. Claude, um, and you can see the devastation behind me. I mean, really, just unbelievable amount of damage to this home, um, completely leveled. I mean, you can see the roof caved in. Um, excuse me, I have to watch where I stepped up. Uh, wood and debris flung everywhere. I mean, just unbelievable. I'll shine the light there so you can see that a little bit better. Um, and then if we, if we can pan over there to where those homes are, you can see just how powerful this tornado was. I mean, it completely destroyed that home. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, praying that no one was inside at the time. Um, and then if we can go over there, we can see some first responders there, um, you know, 
group, grouping up. They've been conducting search and rescues in this area all throughout the night. We have not uh, heard of any victims. We've had no reports of victims um, as of yet, so thankful for that. Um, but really, just unbelievable. I'm not sure. This it looks like it might have been a church. Does that look like a church to you, Steve? A little bit? Um, I mean, we see some chairs there. We see, um, you know, the... The, I don't know if those are pews or not. I, I, I can't tell. I'm not sure what, what the structure is. But, but um, you know, obviously if it is a church or, or a meeting place or whatever, um, you know, we were hopeful that no one was inside at the time. Um, so, yeah, this is just really, really bad out here. Um, you know, we're going to continue to report and try and go along with some of these responders who are conducting these search and rescues. Um, but for now, we're, we're live in Araby. David Jones, Fox 8, Local First. All right, David, thank you so much. He's right near St. Claude Avenue and Center Street, uh, right as you enter St. Bernard Parish in Araby. St. Bernard Parish officials say sections of Judge Perez and St. Claude are shut down due to down power lines and, of course, debris. We've been talking about the down lines, but there's also, you got to imagine, a lot of debris. Here is um, the Entergy power outage map, and you can see um, the red all over the, the bottom right of your screen. The blue is is the industrial canal cross over that you're in the lower ninth ward. There's about 8000 customers in the lower ninth ward. It looks essentially the, like the entire lower ninth ward is without power right now. And then moving into St. Bernard, huge section of Araby, possibly all of Araby, more than 3800 customers are out of power at this hour. We mentioned the 8000 in Orleans as well. Here's a look at uh, traffic tie-ups right now. I'm trying to tell exactly what. That's, that's, that's Araby. Okay, okay, so that that is Araby. Yeah, and um, yeah, basically the the parish has is shut down, uh, Shelley. They're not allowing yeah. people into the parish right now. So what we're seeing there is really emergency vehicles, you know, law enforcement. I mean, that's you know, that's probably. Uh, what is it is showing, but it's just I, I put that up there on our Fox 8 traffic just to give people an idea of the area we're talking about and where the most activity is uh, right now and obviously probably most of the damage based on that. The oranges and the yellows along Claiborne as you head into Judge Perez Drive and then also um, St. Claude Avenue heading into St. Bernard Highway. That's those yellows and oranges. You don't want to be traveling right now with all of these power outages down power lines, possibly live wires, also lots of debris all across that area. So very dangerous situation. You want to allow those emergency responders the access they need to get to the locations and get people who may need emergency care as soon as possible. We mentioned that they were also uh, having a staging area right near Center Street in Araby and, and bringing some of those people who needed shelter, but taking them on buses to the St. Bernard Civic Center. And are we going, okay, we're, we're going to show you more video. Um, so many images coming in and, and just devastating to see <clears throat> the size of a tornado um, like this in our area. And as David mentioned, we haven't seen anything like this since the New Orleans East tornado, the EF3, back in 2017. Yeah, 2017, Shelley. And uh, when, we, when we look at the video like this, and there's a, one earlier that I saw, I guess I saw on Twitter, I'm, I'm getting confused on where I saw it all, but I could actually see uh, broader circulations around the tornado, like miniature circulations, almost like tentacles extending out from the main funnel, and that's what you mentioned earlier is called scientific term, a multi-vortex tornado. Uh, those are the largest and most dangerous types of tornadoes, and oftentimes those uh, uh, individual circulations, those small spinning areas that extend out from the main funnel, those can cause the most extensive amount of damage. Uh, researchers have found that those can cause some of the worst damage and have some of the strongest winds, and that's the type of tornado that we saw tonight, very similar uh, to what happened five years ago. When you look at that, that funnel section, though, I mean, I've lived here my whole life, and you look at something like that, I don't remember seeing anything like that that wide. I, I've got, I know, and you know what? I'm, I'm talking to producers. I'm talking to the newsroom at the same time. I sent an email a few minutes ago, and it's on my Twitter, uh, of uh, a very close-up video of this tornado that somebody dangerously took uh, from their porch. If we can get that one on the air, uh, and you see the power flashes, and you can see the debris blowing around the tornado, you can literally see homes uh, and roofs 
rotating around the tornado. This is some of the most incredible tornado video I've seen yet. That's amazing. But what I sent the newsroom a few minutes ago and is on my Twitter feed right now, if we can get that on Fox 8, that really tells the story of just how gigantic uh, this tornado was tonight. And I believe this this image or this video was taken from Chalmette looking at Araby and, and Chalmette's right next door. Right. But and, the and one you're talking about was this probably was in, in Araby. Araby. No, this person, you can actually hear the tornado distinctly. Uh, and so when we get it on the air, uh, you know, we'll check it, I guess, for words. I haven't done that, but but I could hear you could hear the tornado from this person's uh, porch. And we're looking from all different angles. Uh, we talked about Chalmette, Araby. This is in this this angle is actually from the lower ninth ward. Yeah, I was playing this video again uh, on my phone. And you can hear that. And so it gives you an idea of just how close that person was. But when we get that, when we get that up on the air, uh, anyway, it's just incredible. Uh, and you can just, when you see the sheer damage, houses leveled, chunks of houses just missing, you can see into bedrooms on the second floor and then chunks of the houses are just removed, cars flipped over. I saw power lines along Frisco, um, I think it's Friscoville, and that's one of the streets in Araby, and the power lines were just all twisted and mangled, and they had metal wrapped around the lines. Which is a, which is a, a classic sign of tornado damage. Obviously, there's no question here what it was, uh, because we see the tornado itself. Uh, but you, I've seen that before. I've seen huge pieces of metal just literally wrapped around trees, wrapped around telephone poles, uh, like it's aluminum foil is really the best way to describe it. And of course, the, some of the damage we've seen, we've seen homes completely destroyed uh, tonight. We've seen cars that have been flipped, crushed, and tossed like they were toys. Uh, this is definitely strong tornado video. And a strong tornado, again, is uh, defined as an EF2 or stronger. An EF2 is winds of at least 100 and 11 miles per hour up to around 130, 140. Uh, this very well could be EF3 damage like we saw in New Orleans East. Again, it's nighttime. I've only seen a little bit of it. Uh, so, you know, we won't know that for sure, but I can say without a doubt, this was considered a major tornado of at least uh, EF2 category. And I'd the reports, be shocked if they found any, if it was less than that. I was just going to say, David, the reports of the damages coming in early on when this all first started, that tornado warning when you first got on the air this evening, uh, we were hearing from folks in Gretna, and we talked to the Jefferson Parish Emergency Operations Center Director Joe Valiente, and he said, you know, we've got reports of transformers blowing up. That's another classic sign of extremely strong winds and tornado damage. And, and he said they had an observer that was in Terrytown in a shelter in Terrytown who witnessed extremely rough, heavy rain and what appeared to be a tornado possibly moving across the Mississippi River okay. toward the east bank of Orleans. Okay, this, Shelley, this is the video I was talking about. This wow. is a, a gentleman, Marshall Jackson, on his porch in Araby. Listen. You can hear the winds of the tornado roaring. Uh, if you look up close at it, you can see large pieces of debris uh, flying around the funnel. And you can also see uh, circulations around the main funnel as this storm is tearing across the ground. And of course, the power flashes uh, as uh, these power lines are being taken out. Again, uh, this is the most up close, intense video I have seen of it yet. Uh, passing dangerously close to this gentleman's house in Araby, uh, shot by Marshall Jackson and sent to me uh, by a mutual friend. But uh, really incredible stuff to see. And the sound on that, to hear that roar that people always talk about. It's, it's so cliche to say it sounds like a train or mm -hmm. you know something to that effect. But uh, you know it definitely adds that roar, almost like a jet engine is what that sounded like to me, uh, like from an airplane or something like that up close. It is chilling to, to look at and, and to listen and to hear that sound. And when you talk about the winds, David, associated with an EF2 or EF3 compared to 
the winds of a strong hurricane. All right, well, we, we, can, we can make that comparison. In EF2, uh, the storm wind started around 110, 111 miles per hour, and that would be a Category 3 hurricane. So uh, an, e an EF2 uh, is basically comparable uh, to winds you would see in a Category 3 hurricane, and an EF3 ranges from Category 4 uh, to a low-end Category 5 hurricane. So you're talking about obviously over a much smaller area, but very, very destructive winds, and that's why we classify EF2 tornadoes as major tornadoes. Again, it has not been classified as that. Uh, I would be shocked if this was not stronger than an EF1 tornado, but I've only seen a little bit of damage. But I'm just doing that to, to get from perspective to folks, uh, and especially comparing to what we had happen five years ago uh, with the New Orleans East tornado. All right, uh, we have several teams located in Araby tonight. Katie Rust is in Araby also, where active searches are underway um, in the area, immediate area where she is right now. Katie. Chilly. Yeah, well, it's probably close to some of the other crews that we have out here. We're on Benjamin Street, but it's as far as we could get on Patricia. We were trying to get over to the Civic Center where we hear residents are being taken if they need shelter. It's an absolutely heartbreaking scene out here. We just spoke with a man who's walking down the street shouting out his dog's name. He's looking for his dog. Uh, there were crews out here actively looking for people. I have been able to confirm that one of those searches, they did actually find the person they were looking for. So some of them are happy endings here. Uh, I do have it unconfirmed that there may be a house nearby. This is what we were trying to get to, but we couldn't get any further on this street because of the down power lines and the situation here. We couldn't get the car down, um, but I have it unconfirmed. Just multiple people walking away from the area. Uh, told us that they were searching for a little boy. We are trying to confirm that, and I don't want to alarm anyone just yet, but we're trying to get down that way and look for that. But they are actively searching for both human beings and pets out here. I'm hearing that man coming back this way, searching for his dog. Absolutely devastating. There are homes that are just completely collapsed and leveled. People's belongings just scattered everywhere. It's unimaginable the damage that we're seeing right now. We're going to try to catch up with some of these people and confirm uh, where these searches are happening and if they are finding people in the rubble because some of these houses are pretty bad. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Reporting from Araby, Caitlin Russ, Fox 8 Local First. Oh, wait. Those are, um, I believe, the people that were looking for the dog. If you see some of the flashlights down there, uh, it's very hard to see out here. There's very little light and power. We are lighting this up with our car, actually, right now. It is completely dark out here. Everyone has flashlights. That's the only way you're going to be able to see. Don't try to leave your house right now if you can stay inside. The roads are incredibly dangerous. And as I say, this is as far as we could get on Patricia. Um, and we even had to drive around in some dicey spots to try to get this way. But I don't think we're going to be able to get over to the Civic Center unless it is on foot. I am seeing a lot of people having to get out of their cars and walk on foot to the Civic Center. That's the only way that uh, people are able to get there. We're about a mile and a half away from the Civic Center, a half hour walk. All right, um, Katie, thank you so much. And I want to bring in Liz Reyes now, who joins us tonight. And you were hearing the man screaming in the background. It is just heart-wrenching. And worse, it's all unfolding now, the aftermath of this uh, horrific uh, scene in the dark, you know, making it even more heart-wrenching for the folks who are probably wondering where their loved ones are. In that case, it's a man looking for his dog, which to him, of course, is a family member. Uh, David Jones is in the field as well tonight, uh, giving us a look at what people are going through at this hour after this uh, devastation hit Araby. David. Yeah, I've been speaking a little bit with David. David, are you a resident out here? Yes, sir. I've been living down here since 1967. And I've been here for a pretty long time. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this come through here. Maybe one tornado about 15 years ago. And this is your car? This is your car, correct? Yes, sir. Wow. Picked it up and flipped it over. What are you going to do next? 
Uh, I'm just going to try to figure out when they're going to clean all this up, try to get the car flipped over and uh, get all my paperwork out of it, try to get another vehicle. That's all I can do. You said, where's this, where's this roof from? You were telling uh, me a little bit earlier. It's from the building next door, because the tornado came through here mm -hmm. from the river mm -hmm. all the way through St. Claude, or St. Bernard Highway, as they call it, mm -hmm. and continue on. And then uh, we was next door taking cover, and we, and we heard it coming. And then when it finally stopped, we all came outside and looked, and all the poles were down, the lights went off, and it was just completely torn up. Did you ever think that something like this could happen here? Oh, uh, no, we didn't think it was going to be this bad. We knew it was coming in. We thought it wasn't going to be nowhere like this, but this is pretty bad. Yeah. Have you been down the street? Have you seen the houses down the street? Uh, no, but I got a friend of mine coming up. They own a, a, a bed and breakfast down the block, and they wanted me to go check on it, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about this call first. And you said they that you need, it, you need it for work, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen. Ain't going to happen. What do you do for work? Well, uh, I work uptown with a uh, uh, local 39, stagehands local, mm -hmm. convention center. And uh, I just had to uh, figure it out tomorrow. Yeah. Just move along. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I appreciate it. All right. Um, as you can see, just just devastation out here in Araby. Um, we've been speaking with some residents. We're going to make our way down the street um, where we've heard that. Um, I mean, uh, earlier we were speaking with a resident um, to. To um, sorry. Uh, so down the street from where we are, not, your, not the opposite way from where you're looking. Um, there is a lot of damage we're hearing um, on the houses down that street. You can see behind me, though. Um, yeah, let's just, yeah, Steve, let's just walk and talk here. Um, and we're going to do our best to walk and talk because we got a lot of debris on the ground to step over. Um, but I mean, you can see just like how how devastating. I mean, sit, like blocks, you know, like that have just been ripped off this church, um, which we have confirmed. I don't know if you were uh, all with us for our earlier hit, but uh, we were looking at a church here and we have confirmed that it is a church. So we're hoping that no one was inside at the time. Um, we have speaking with first responders. We have not been told of any um, casualties or any victims or any injuries. Um, so thankful for that. But of course, that could change as more information develops. Um, we know that rescuers have made their way down down this area. Um, prior i want to say maybe about 30 minutes ago um you know and and they we kind of saw them huddled off to the side so um it didn't appear that um you know that there were any any lives lost or any injuries or anything like that we haven't seen uh, paramedics taking anyone either but i mean you can just wow steve can we show this house over here i don't know if we're able to sh i mean this is just unbelievable unbelievable amount of destruction here in araby sorry i'm just stepping over some wires i mean look at that wow Wow, roof completely collapsed. Home is just demolished, demolished. I mean, this is just, this is really, really bad. This is really bad. Um, all right, we're gonna keep walking and talking here. Um, hopefully maybe we can find uh, some residents out here. David, Again, can you hear us? Careful of the wires here. I see some, some, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? As you're walking and talking, of course, please be careful with all those wires that are down because it's what emergency uh, officials also stress in the aftermath of storms. But, you know, as you take in uh, that scene there, that horrible scene, uh, as people are trying to figure out, you know, where their loved ones are, um, what they're going to be doing tomorrow after their homes have been destroyed. How many homes would you say were hit that tomorrow morning when they start counting? I know it's dark, but can you give us an idea? Oh, man. I mean, it looks like almost every house on this street, and this is, only, this is just one street in Araby, but almost every house on this street I'm seeing has some kind of damage, either partial roof damage or, you know, the roof caved in and completely destroyed, um, you know, debris in the road, wires down, hanging on trees in front yards. I mean, this is just really, really unbelievable. What is really unbelievable, too, is that so far, um, you're not hearing, and we have yet to confirm that there have been any deaths. It's almost as though people were able to hunker down safely, but still, by the damage you're showing us, that still is incredible. Yeah, these, these houses, I can't tell from the, from the exterior if there's any damage on these or not, um, but uh, I'm, I'm seeing some first responder lights and activity further down the street, so as we're walking here, we could 
potentially come up on some more damage, um, you know, and even just vehicle damage. I mean, trees falling on vehicles, branches, limbs, um, you know, windshields and um, passengers and driver's side windows broken, um, you know, windows inside the house broken. Um, I mean, really just unbelievable. We'll, we'll, let's go over here and talk with a couple of residents and see if see if they want to say anything. Oh my God, this is just horrible. Hey, excuse me, sir. Could you tell me? No. All right, thank you. And David, from what Could you, you tell can me what tell, you saw, ma'am. We really didn't see anything. We live one street over. We heard it, and it was ha over like so fast. And then we were hearing two streets over that way that people it passed right over them we really didn't know that it was this bad over here mm -hmm. so we were just out here checking on all the neighbors yeah. making sure that anybody who needs to go someplace else can get out how far away do you live from here i live one block back and one block over and you said you actually heard the you yeah yeah we could we could hear it and um the you know the power went out and uh we could see like the transformers blowing up and things like that it's pretty, I don't know if y'all went this way, but it's... No, we're, we're walking down there now. It's pretty bad on that block, and that's right right behind us. Wow, wow. All right, thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so much for yeah, talking absolutely. to us. All right, so we'll keep walking here. Um, I mean, this is just really, really, really hard to take in. Very David, are you in. still on Center Street in Araby? No, I, um, I want to say, I want to say we're probably on, um, Le, are we on Frisco? Frisco? Friscoville. Okay, so we're on Friscoville Ave. Okay. Which you can see is blocked off by a, by a tree here. There's a tree blocking the road? Yeah, oh my god, wow. Wow. Man, I mean, that just goes to show you the power of this tornado. Unbelievable. Unbelievable amount of damage here. And it looks wow. like the degree wow. of damage really changed from just a few houses over to where you are now as you keep walking down that street. Yeah, and, and that's the weird thing. I mean, I don't, I'm not a meteorologist, so I'll let David tackle all those questions. Um, but, you know, to me, it's almost like it seems like it hopped or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, again, not a meteorologist. But, yeah, I mean, this, a couple of houses don't have any damage it looks like, or at least not visible damage, and then a couple of houses do have damage. Um, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, and yes. so David, uh, David wow. Bernard here. Wow. Um, uh, that is very common with tornadoes, uh, to see spotty damage like that, and particularly uh, in, in, a da in a tornado like this, that may be one of these multi-vortex tornadoes where you might have one of these uh, severe areas of spinning air, uh, hit a couple of houses, then skip, and miss another one. The other thing has to do with the type of construction. One house might be built better uh, and stronger than the other, the type of building, and so you're just not gonna get, the damage is not gonna be equal. It depends on the type of structure uh, that it has been hit. But what you are seeing is very common uh, in uh, all the tornadoes that I've seen over the years. And you do have a lot of older homes in Araby, yeah, but then since Katrina, you have some areas where the homes were demolished after the storm, 16, 17 years ago, so and then the totally hurricane. new construction homes. Right. But it looks like this area uh, might be where some of the older homes are. But look at that. The roof is looks like they just sliced it. Somebody, you know, yeah, we're, sliced we're, it right we're, off. We're, we're, heading, we're heading toward the, um, toward the riverside of, uh, of Araby on Friscoville. Um, and you can see just this row of structures about uh, one, two, three, four, at least four houses. The roofs just completely ripped off i mean gone I don't, I don't even see them in the front yard i mean this is really really this is really devastating for a lot of the, a lot of people who live out here very devastating now if it move in the i was told the south to north direction so are you talking it's coming like from more from the river and then kind of sliced we're, across we're heading, the neighborhoods we're heading toward we're heading we're heading toward the river walking south where you would probably see a lot more damage, but it's it's always um, incredible, as David was saying, the way a storm with that magnitude, with that power, can hopscotch. You could have one house across the street standing, whether it's before, for how it was built or simply the location as that powerful tornado moved through. 
but to more morning when the sun rises, it's, it's, it's going to be just heartbreaking for all of these folks once they get a better idea. You can see some of them are out there. David, do you find it's uh, a lot of people coming from other streets or you have a lot of people at their homes who were home that are now assessing what's happened? So far, a lot of people coming from, from other streets, but let's go over here. Excuse me. Did you guys see what happened? No, you weren't? All right, thank you. There's some, they're workers. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try and speak with some residents. I mean, from, from the ones we've spoke with, it's, it's mostly been people checking on, checking on friends and checking on relatives. Um, that, uh, that gentleman who, um, hi, how are you? Um, whose car was flipped over closer towards St. Claude. Um, he, was, he said he was from here and he lived here um, and that he was actually at a bar nearby, like next door drinking, um, you know, and, and with, with some friends and, you know, they took shelter when the, when the storm came. Um, and, you know, and he said that they actually heard it. Hey, excuse me, yes. could, could you tell me what you saw? I would not, did not see. No, you didn't no, see? No, but we're at 825, the one with the palm trees down. Yeah. Do you, does your house have damage? Uh, house does not, but the yard is badly damaged, yeah. but we're right across the street from the, the four homes that have damage. Got you. Do you know any of the people who live in those homes? All of them. Yeah. 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 Most of them, everybody's safe, so that's, that's a good part on this side, is everybody's safe. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to know that. It's yeah. good to know that. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Be safe. All right. So we'll stay out here. We're going to talk with some people um, who are milling about, but for now we're live in Araby. David Jones, Fox 8, Local First. Thank right, you, David. David. Um, it, it is just heartbreaking after this tornado uh, all day. You know, our meteorologist, David Bernard, our chief meteorologist, and warning us of the potential there. The environment was there for the potential for this to happen. Um, we were hoping that the worst would, would stay far away from us. But late this afternoon and this evening, it just started to, to churn up. And, and, and so quickly in such a short time period, when David was on the air to where we are now, shows how quickly it can cause such significant damage. Um, I know David was saying it appears as though a lot of people from the nearby streets were coming over in Araby to see the damage. They couldn't believe how significant it was, but possibly earlier um, some of those buses were out there trying to transport people. So some of those people may have been taken, I believe it was a civic center yes, and other places right. where if they knew for sure about an hour or two hours ago that their home was damaged. But the damage that is there just shows like how powerful these things are. And when they say if you're in a mobile home, you can't stay, especially if you know from early in the day you're going to be dealing with a lot of significant uh, tornadoes. This is Mar Marina Road, and I understand this they are searching for a little boy. Well, this video right here is, is from Marina Road. This is off of Paris Road in Chalmette. This is uh, on the road that takes you to the Big Green Bridge. And um, so that's where this video was taken to give you a different perspective. So not that far away, it's in Chalmette, and this tornado happened in Araby, but you were talking about a missing person. We were live with Caitlin Rust in Araby a short time ago, and we could hear this man in the background screaming, and she thought he was searching for an animal, possibly a dog, but um, we understand that she has confirmed that the man is looking for a little boy in the Benjamin area. So we're gonna work to get more details on that. And hopefully that little boy is safe. And um, we, we've seen that a lot of firefighters, sheriff's deputies, all types of emergency responders have converged on this area to try to help find people. Cause you gotta imagine some people might be trapped in, in some of that rubble when we've seen roofs just sliced off and then in parts of houses, move to mm. other parts of the street. At 9.33, uh, we're getting so much video, um, getting hearing from our reporters in the field after uh, a devastating night as tornadoes move through the hardest hit area, Araby right now. You and can see, video, look at that video, as this thing was just whisking through that neighborhood. David uh, Bernard, we have a lot of Davids here. David yeah. Bernard earlier was saying that this is the closest that we've seen video to the tornado tonight from someone's porch in Araby and how you can hear the winds and, and see kind of debris going around that funnel area. Yeah, in fact, in fact, uh, we could, when we play it through again, we can bring, if we bring the sound up, uh, listen. That's what a major 
tornado sounds like, and the person that shot the video dangerously close to tornado, any deviation in the track, and uh, it would have been really bad for this particular individual. Thank goodness they're okay, but uh, when you look up close, uh, you can see large pieces of debris. Some of it, you know, from a distance like that, it looks like it's small. Probably some of that is not small. Very large pieces of wood, roofing, uh, you know, uh, parts of homes. There, there might even be a car in there. Uh, the fact that we've seen cars uh, crushed and tossed uh, easily. Uh, there may have been cars that were picked up uh, by the tornado and deposited uh, it's somewhere else, but uh, there, there's some other video that I, I've been looking at on Facebook and we're going to try to get it on the air and it actually shows the tornado crossing the river uh, from Orleans uh, into St. on from the West Bank to the East Bank and uh, when we looked at our rotation path on Viper earlier, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and put back up here in a minute. I don't have it quite just yet uh, that the shear path also I think really kind of tells the story of what happened with the storm uh, as it moved through portions of um, uh, Orleans Parish. Sorry, I'm just trying to focus on a couple of things, but clearly the storm got a lot stronger uh, as it moved uh, from the West Bank to the East Bank. And David, when you see the damage that's left behind after this move through, especially in Araby, what we were just watching just a short while ago, what would that be the equivalent to if a hurricane were to hit? Well, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. First of all, we don't know how strong this tornado was. Mm. I'm surmising by my experience and from the limited amount of video that I've seen that this is at least an EF2, or, uh, EF2 tornado. The New Orleans East tornado five years ago was EF3. It may be that strong too, which would tie it as the strongest uh, her, uh, tornado on record uh, to hit the metropolitan area. The New Orleans East was the strongest on record at that point. And EF2 uh, is like category three hurricane winds, 110, 130 mile per hour, 135 mile per hour winds, borderline four. And EF3 has, uh, would be category four, getting into the category five range. Uh, winds perhaps as high as 160, 165 miles per hour on the upper end of an EF3. So while we're entering this severe weather season, it's still extremely rare to get a significant tornado like we're talking about tonight. Well, it's it's I mean, it's it's definitely tornado season here. There's no doubt about it. And we had a tornado watch tonight and we were talking about it since yesterday we went the whole day and these storms didn't do anything. And something happened south of the lake tonight uh, that caused a tornado to form over Lake Pontchartrain and a tornado to form over Lake Salvador and move across uh, the metropolitan areas and on the North Shore. This was also probably a pretty strong tornado, even though it largely avoided populated areas in St. Tammany Parish. When it crossed the lakefront and crossed Highway 190 and moved uh, into the woods there, there was a lot of trees down and our rotation tracker on that was showing very strong rotation uh, as well. We can, this is tornado season for us. I was gonna say this video right here is taken right off of uh, West Judge Perez near Buccaneer Villa. That's actually the ranch, the big sound stage in Chalmette, really the heart of Chalmette. Um, where Interview with the Vampire has been filming in that building right there. And you could see in the background, Araby and the massive funnel cloud in the distance. David, and David, when you see this, I mean, it just looks to me, I'm not a meteorologist, like a, the classic video that you would imagine what a tornado would look like. And as it's moving, it's, it's, it's got what inside of it? It's just got all of that wind. It's, 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 it's got dirt. It's got debris. It's in this case, and it, it might, you know, have water as it's moving over marsh and at times when it's moving over the river. Uh, and, and, this is not what we typically see, especially south of the lake. I mean, when we had uh, the tornado five years ago uh, in New Orleans East, uh, there's a reason why an EF3 has been the strongest on record. We don't typically get tornadoes that strong. Now, north of the lake, you don't have to go that far north, and to get an EF2 and EF3, while still rare, uh, it is a little bit more common there, and, and for various reasons, uh, but because of our proximity to water, uh, that tends to have somewhat of a stabilizing effect, and we don't get these large tornadoes this far south. But boy, we got one tonight, 
and uh, it's rivaling what we saw five years ago. And also the chance, you know, if you look at how much of the area is populated south of the lake, right? If you, if, it, if you look at the entire south shore, most of the area is marsh, right? And so it's a combination of just bad luck and bad placement of this particular storm. This could have easily been, you know, 20, 30 miles to the south and, and, and maybe it would have skirted uh, the marsh in St. Bernard and gone into Lake Bourne, but that wasn't the case. It just stayed uh, over a heavily populated area, unfortunately. We had, what was it, three different tornado warnings all around the same time, different parts of the metro area. We had this one that started off on the west bank of Jefferson. We had the one on the north right. shore, so St. That, Tammany. Those were, those were the two tornadoes. So we had the one that started over the causeway that moved into St. Tammany Parish and then eventually into Mississippi and weekend. And then we had this one that started over Lake Salvador and moved across the west bank and then to the east bank, particularly uh, looks like through Araby. Uh, and then apparently it must have weakened to some extent when it got into New Orleans East. That's when the radar signature was not as strong. And again, we're not hearing anything out of New Orleans East as far as significant damage. So that must have been what happened there. Araby, no doubt uh, the hardest hit tonight. We're hearing from storm victims and uh, one of them we spoke to earlier. Well, you can hear the wind coming through. I put my family in the bathroom as soon as we got in the bathroom. Um, all of our ears popped and you just you just you just knew, you know, you knew what it was. And uh, I come out, it lasted maybe 10 seconds tops. I don't think it lasted that long. We, I come outside and, we, and this, it looked like the Ukraine, you know. Are all y'all okay? Everybody's okay. Did it Everybody. sound like a train no, or? No train. No train, just very strong wind. And I mean, I just went through Ida and I knew it, was, it sounded stronger than Ida wind. So I knew it was pretty, I knew it was pretty bad. You know? How's your house? The house looks okay. My fence is tore up. Um, I got a broken window, but yeah, we're not gonna be able to assess this good till tomorrow morning, you know? So we can see everything. Did you ever expect something like this to happen? Um, yes, I do actually. I think the weather is just horrible, maybe. And I, I'm not surprised if a little bit. Are you neighbors? Everybody's okay? Everybody's okay. You, you look across the street here. This guy was by himself with his dog and his cat. He made it out. And uh, but everybody I've talked to so far is okay. The fireman said there was a couple people with some, you know, a little banged up, but I think that's really that's all I've heard so far. 42 hearing from some of the victims after that powerful tornado just uh, went down St. Claude. You know, we've all driven that road heading into Chalmette and to imagine something just traveling at parts of that and just hitting the heart uh, of this community. These are pictures uh, uh, now video more of this uh, massive tornadoes damage that's will be even more clearer when the sun rises tomorrow. But just by what we see, the power of the storm, this car that was flipped over, I think that was a car we were talking to someone earlier. He said that was his car to get to work. He didn't know what he was going to do next. So many people that the tops of their homes have been sliced off, um, some completely flattened. Look at those power lines, Liz. I mean, they're just wrapped and just twisted and mangled metal around the power lines. I think that was in the Friscoville area of Araby, this home, I mean, I mean, you can't salvage something like that. And you wonder about the people, I mean, a lot of people had just gotten home from mm -hmm. work, a lot of kids home from school. I mean, hopefully these, these people hunker down in, in the center of their homes, in bathrooms, like we heard from that gentleman just a minute ago, um, because you could see what happens to the outside of the mm -hmm. homes or if there's windows around the most dangerous areas. And there's so many down power lines like this right now. There's 3,800 roughly, maybe more, in the Araby area without power. 8,000 in um, the lower ninth ward. That's that huge chunk of red you see kind of at the bottom of your screen. That's that entire area, those communities adjacent to each other. And so you definitely don't want to be driving around. Stay put if you can, because those emergency responders They've got a huge emergency on their hands already. The last thing they need is to respond to somebody getting injured from debris on the ground or a live wire. And Entergy, I can only imagine, we haven't spoken with them just yet, but we've heard from some officials saying, you know, they're not going to get out there right away until they know things are clear. So things, you know, the weather situation is clear. So they probably haven't had a chance to get out and fully assess the the full situation so um, you got to keep that in mind and so um, our prayers go out to 
all of these families who were affected. In Araby, we know so many families who went through Hurricane Katrina so many years ago. They rebuilt. Some people built new construction homes down there, and a lot of those homes have now been hit. All these years later, March 22nd, 2022, mm. will be the tornado that they now remember. Right, and sadly, we are hearing from uh, St. Bernard officials of one death, several people in hospitals receiving treatment. David Jones is uh, with one of those rescue crews giving us an update from Araby tonight. David. Yeah, we're on Royal Street in Araby right now. We're just following along some first responders that are going door to door and making sure that residents are safe, that people are safe here. Um, again, just total devastation from what we're seeing here. Um, you know, Steve, I don't know if, can you do a quick pan to the right? Do a quick pan to the right so you can see. I mean, look at that. That's just horrible. And uh, uh, the neighbor actually told me that the roof on this house was already pretty damaged from Ida, um, that they hadn't replaced it yet. So that might account for some of the damage you see. Um, but this really looks like, I mean, I'm again, not a meteorologist here, but it looks like it could have touched down around here. We got a trailer flipped over on its side, um, debris scattered everywhere. Uh, power lines are down, still down. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, you can see a couple there. Um, yeah, a couple there is having a having a having a moment. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna move on from them um, and continue on down here. Um, again, we're on Royal Street in Araby. Um, just walking along here, taking account of the damage, talking to some residents and people who live out here about what they saw and what they experienced. Um, you know, just devastating, devastating. Parish President David, I'm not sure if you've heard this. Uh, one person confirmed dead, several people injured at the hospital. We are not sure of the severity of the injuries, but based on all of those images, the video that you've been sending, it's it's truly amazing. Our, you know, it's heartbreaking, and you can't help but feel for the folks tonight who uh, are getting the news of that one death. But Hopefully that number will not go any higher, but when you look at all the damage, it, it really is surprising, and hopefully we will not be hearing of that number rising later this evening. And David, that looks like a yeah, business yeah, to, your, um, to your right, you, right there. Is that, is that a business in the middle of the neighborhood? Yeah, so um, this is a food store and cafe, or be food store and cafe, but um, doesn't appear to have, I mean, very minor damage, um, some siding hanging off, but um, but nothing nothing clear that we've seen in terms of uh, in terms of structural damage. But that we were gives people with, perspective uh, of where you are. Uh, the the actual store, a lot of people believe okay, me, yes, I'm very yes, familiar so with that, or have eaten there, yeah. <laughs> to give you perspective of where so you on, are, so people know where you on, are. Got you, got you. Um, yeah, so we're uh, we're on Friscoville now. So we're heading north on Friscoville. Um, if you're familiar with this area, um, you can see some re some uh, first responders here. Um, I was talking with a woman who actually she her her house sustained some damage. Um, the ceiling on the second floor caved in. Um, you know some some damage in, in her living room. Uh, she said the windows got blown out in her living room. But, um, you know, she was watching TV and actually saw the tornado warnings, um, you know, and, and uh, heard the meteorologist saying to, you know, take cover. And so she took her, her family inside the bathroom, hid inside the bathroom um, to take cover. And, you know, she's very thankful. She said she's blessed that, um, that they all survived and no one was injured. But, um, you know, they, they just uh, replaced their, their roof uh, from Ida. So um, they'll now have to, have to deal with that um, damage. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's horrible. Um, they're now looking inside. I can't, I'm not sure what this building is. Um, is that Araby some, Elementary? I think it's an elementary school. I'm, I'm not sure. I looked on my maps. It wasn't labeled on, on maps. Uh, Steve, can we show the elementary school again? Araby elementary. It's Araby Elementary. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so Araby Elementary, um, you know, and, and no, no damage that I can see visible. I mean, you can see up in that in that tree right up there. I don't know if, if you could pan up to that. Um, but I mean, that just goes to show you like how powerful these winds mm. are, um, how powerful this storm and this tornado was. Um, but again, no, no damage, no damage from what we can see there. It looks like the power though is on. Or unless it's at, a back Or unless generator? they have. I, I'm, I'm thinking that they probably have a generator mm. at the school. Um, Cause yeah, the power, the power's out. I mean, 
everywhere here um, on this entire block, the blocks that we've gone over to, um, they don't have any power here. It seems like you have a lot of people milling around on the streets. Is it still people coming from other streets to get a look after word spread on the devastation on that particular road that you're on? Or does it seem like there are people that live on that street? Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm thinking people probably um, probably live on, on blocks and streets next door to here um, that possibly didn't get damage as bad. Um, and they're just coming through here and walking and taking videos and all that. Um, you know, we certainly want to remind people to, you know, stay inside. Don't don't block first responders pass. We're doing our best to to stay out of the path of first responders. Um, but I mean, look at that. Can we can we show that car right there? I mean, this is just crazy. Um, yeah, you can see you can see this just completely destroyed. Um, and this house, I mean, is just is it, the damage is horrible. It's really, really horrible. And so far tonight at 9.50, if you're just joining us as we uh, were talking to our reporter David Jones live in the field in Araby, at least one person dead, several injured in the New Orleans area, especially hard hit in Araby after these tornadoes moved through. Um, one headed to the North Shore did not obviously escalate into what we're looking at here. This is the one where we're seeing the most significant yeah. damage tonight in St. Bernard Parish at came through Hurricane Katrina, as Shelley reminded us many years ago, rebuilt, and then tonight, another devastating hit from Mother Nature. This time, it's a tornado. With hurricanes, you got time to prepare. With a tornado, you got to move very quickly, and they come with the equivalent power, as we can see from these pictures. Roofs sliced off, cars tossed up like toys, mm -hmm. power lines just, you know, all yeah, crumpled. Yeah. And we are waiting, actually, David, we are waiting yeah. to hear from Guy McGinnis, the St. Bernard Parish president. He is supposed to be speaking uh, during a live news conference coming up in about nine minutes from now at 10 o'clock. And we will bring you that as it happens. But um, he we heard from him a little bit earlier this evening and it was still very early on and he was just getting to assess some of the areas. Um, so we're hoping to get some more updated information from him. But this tornado, as David Bernard mentioned, started up over um, Lake Salvador on the west bank of Jefferson Parish. It moved through the Gretna Terrytown area, skipped over, hopped over the Mississippi River and then um, into Araby and St. Bernard Parish. All right, we do have another. Yeah, I, um, I'm not sure if you got. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was I was just going to say I'm not sure um, I'm not sure, you know, where where the tornado's path was, but I can get a pretty good indicator of of the damage. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it, Steve, if we can just if we can pan over back toward that damage. So um, we spoke with a couple residents who were telling us that they actually saw the tornado, um, you know, come over and kind of like cross a diagonal path here through uh, the street that we're on through Friscoville. So um, again, I'm not sure that's not confirmed, but um, it does appear that 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 was the path of the tornado. Thank you so much, uh, David. We also have Natasha Robin and Amanda Roberts in Araby as well, giving us some more perspective on the heartbreaking scenes there tonight. What can you give us, guys? Yeah, I mean, really, it's it's still very dark here, and I know we've talked about that time and time again, but that's just because the power is just out across wide swaths of this area of Cross Araby, um, and people are really... It, it depends on who you talk to. Some of them are scared. Some of them are just very shocked. I think a lot of people are in shock at this point, kind of walking around, just assessing the damage, their own houses, um, many of them in some cases gone. Mm -hmm. um, the damage is so widespread. We're seeing it from blocks and blocks and blocks. In fact, I just told you, man, I've walked multiple blocks here. We're we're here at um, Patricia, Patricia and, and Benjamin, and Benjamin mm -hmm. at this point. And I mean, you can see this is a house right here behind us that, that's gone. The crazy thing, though, and, and just the nature of these tornadoes, you know, we're still trying to figure out it's still dark. So we still haven't seen the extent of all of this damage. But we've talked about how this this house is virtually, you know, uh, the roof was peeled off, uh, you know, rooms which are unrecognizable right now. We're looking into the kitchen. However, you know, just down the way across from this house and across from these houses that were demolished, houses are fine. 
all with just a little bit of damage with it's just hit or miss. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hit or miss and then power lines down everywhere and as amanda said it's extremely dark in fact she's got her flashlight got here. a flashlight this trying to you know see what we can kind of go around because um, it is still mm -hmm. dangerous out here i mean there are power lines that we can touch there are nails uh, in the street there are still branches and debris everywhere very dangerous situation and uh, i actually just spoke with um parish president guy mcginnis just a, a few minutes ago i know he's about to have a news conference um shortly here at 10 o'clock but uh, he told me that there is one confirmed fatality um, here in Araby. Um, he did not give any specifics on that, but he did say also multiple injuries, plenty of people at the St. Bernard Parish Hospital. Um, he does not know the severity at this point of the injuries. But when you look around and you look at the devastation, you have to imagine that there are many people hurt. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've seen the sheriff's office, the fire department. We've seen equipment in here. Mm -hmm. um, we just had a lady ask us, is Red Cross coming? Yeah. I think people are starting to worry. I mean, it's late and they have nowhere to go. And um, they're just wondering, like, what next, right? People are wondering point. if their loved ones are okay. And we're reaching the point where cell signal is getting to be a little scarce or a little hard to have. Um, so people, we've run into folks who are, are trying to look and find their loved ones, um, trying to go into houses, you know, walk around the corner. Um, people are trying to drive in to see if they can make contact with their loved ones because they haven't been able to call them yet. Um, so I know that's something we've discouraged because first responders are trying to uh, secure this place and, and make sure that no one else is injured or, or gets hurt because of all of this damage and debris. But people are still worried. There are pe people still looking for their loved ones. Yeah, and you, you know, I'm from St. Bernard Parish. Mm -hmm. I'll still live here. Um, so I'm getting messages on Facebook. Um, can you find my family? I'm missing so-and-so. Um, have you heard from them? It is just so hard right now. It's so dark out here. I, I have to tell you, I, I live here and, and I'm like, where am I again? Because it doesn't look recognizable to me. Um, in this area at all. Again, we are in Araby um, at Patricia and Benjamin. It is starting to rain. Mm -hmm. um, th th everybody's outside, and, and you, you really can't see anybody until you get up close to them, but everybody's outside trying to assess the damage right here in this area. But the parish president did say, please do not come out. Do not try to come and, and you know, uh, look at the damage for yourself. It is not safe. There are power lines down everywhere. Um, but I, I have to say, uh, Amanda, I'm just shocked at, at, at what we're seeing here tonight. It, it's really hard to see and especially you being here knowing all of these streets and all of these homes and, and to say that it's unrecognizable I think is pretty significant. Yeah, I mean it, it's just terrible and we are watching. You said that there were nails everywhere. Um, I had a firefighter stop me a little while ago and he said, Natasha, please don't go down that street. Um, it's really bad. I mean it is just, you know, and you just don't know. You don't know where you are. Mm -hmm. um, we have the flash Flashlight. Well, when we talk about damage, um, in some cases, homes are gone. Mm -hmm. we, we saw homes moved. Like one home would be across the street mm -hmm. from where we had a guy tell us a little while ago, that house used to be over here. Um, and then other houses are like this, like we see here. You can see a power line right here um, down in the middle of the street. So, I mean, the, the damage is all over the place and it's just so extensive. It's, you wonder where, somebody just told us there was a truck wrapped around a pole. A truck down wrapped the around a pole. I think we see across the street here some, some foil or, or some of roof wrapped around yeah. a, a downed power line. Um, you know, and you were talking about homes being lifted. People told us stories of how they themselves, you know, were gripping onto their children, trying to make sure that they at least stayed in that area, at least that room, so that the tornado wouldn't take them around, lifted off of the ground. Yeah, and you know, we saw, um, we've been trying to get some video uh, back to the station. As Amanda was saying, the cell service is so bad, but um, we actually have some video. I, we got some video from a guy who, um, who lives nearby. His house, thankfully, okay. But um, to look at this massive, what looks like a massive tornado, I don't mm -hmm. know, you know, what, what it's, size in it particular, looks huge. but it, it, you can just hear him. He starts praying, um, looking at it. Please don't come this way because mm -hmm. it is just, it is so scary. He started crying, just talking about it. Um, we were able to get that video and we're going to try to get it to you uh, as soon as we possibly can. But mm -hmm. it is, it is, uh, it's shocking. There's, I mean, just, you, you just don't imagine something yeah. like that. There's happening. a lot of harrowing stories. I'm sure we're just starting to reach the be the beginning of them. We're just starting to hear the first of them, but uh, that's the situation here in Araby. We'll send it back to you all. Okay, thank you guys. As uh, we are awaiting a, a news conference right now from the St. Bernard Parish president to give us 
an update. The latest we've heard after the devastating tornado hitting Araby, at least one person is dead, several people injured, many at the hospital right now. All of this happening as darkness has fallen and we are entering the night. And so a lot, many more hours ahead as search and rescue continues throughout the night. We're going to go ahead and stop this newscast right now, reset and begin Fox 8 News at 10. Fox 8 News is New Orleans' most watched late news. Fox 8 Local First starts now. And good evening, Shelly Brown here alongside Liz Ray as we've been continuing our coverage of this tornado that started uh, over Jefferson Parish across the Mississippi River and then touched down in St. Bernard Parish in Araby where there is in some parts of Araby just utter devastation as some of our reporters have described it um, unrecognizable and these are people who know some of these neighborhoods we we recognize the street names and you can't really tell what's what at this point i mean obviously it's darkness but um there's just so much devastation and things have changed after this storm and you can't really recognize it yeah in such a short time this tornado this powerful tornado truly changed lives tonight. People now without homes. Uh, at least one family lost a loved one, one person dead, several people injured, receiving hospital treatment tonight. There are search and rescue going from door to door, making sure there is no one trapped because you could see how many buildings have crumbled. A lot of folks were able to get out. They hunkered down, but we are still hearing that they're checking to make sure no one perhaps could be trapped in any of the rubble. And so many scenes of the devastation tonight, you know, cars flipped over, uh, power lines down, the, the, the roofs of homes completely taken down, uh, the streets themselves, uh, you're being urged to stay away from that area. We understand earlier some people were transported to uh, the Civic Center because for so many people, there is no home tonight. As we await this update, we continue to show these devastating pictures that just shows in such a short time the power of a tornado. You know, we always say with a hurricane, you can prepare, you can evacuate with a tornado. When David Bernard and our team of meteorologists were warning us all day and when it started unfolding late tonight, where it was going to go, we didn't know exactly. But as it started to turn up, and that path began to form, you had very limited time to quickly run to an area. And hopefully those in mobile homes evacuated earlier today. But those who were in structures that, Shelley, as you were pointing out, were built after Hurricane Katrina. Some of them bigger, better, uh, hurricane graded, but some of them are older homes there. And we've seen so many different um, perspectives of this tornado, different video images from different directions. We did get one. David got one tonight from Esmeralda Zapata in, I believe, Araby, and he said it was the closest video he had seen out of all the videos that he saw tonight, and hopefully we're going to show you that in just a minute. Esmeralda, David, I think, is on the phone with us now live. Ms. Zepeda, are you there? Yes. Okay, I, I don't think this is the exact video. No, but um, Esmeralda, we were talking just a few moments ago, and uh, we're going to show your video in a second, but first I have to ask you, you were very close to that tornado. We're now looking at your tornado video right now. What was going through your mind? Nothing, honestly. My husband asked me to come out because he was working on the shed, and he just was like, oh, babe, come look at the tornado. I was, I was in the kitchen. So I just walked out, and I was shocked. I didn't think anything of it. The only, like, when as it was getting closer, like right in front of us, I was just thinking, oh, my God, what if it comes this way? But then, like, if it does, what are we going to do? Like, it's already right, you know, on the street behind us. What did it sound like? It was just a lot of noise. I could feel the flo uh, the floor shaking every time I would see that the lighting. Well, I got to go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Go ahead. I was going to say, you witnessed and were dangerously close to one of the largest tornadoes we've seen go through. Uh, the metropolitan area. I, I'm just glad that uh, you're okay. Esmeralda, yeah. uh -huh. how close would you say that is to your front porch? Would you say it's just a street or two over? I was thinking it was a street over because it, it looked so close. And I was glad that it, it seemed that it was passing like right on the street. So at the moment I was thinking like, oh my God, thank God it didn't cause any damage. But then my husband went to look around in the streets behind us and about three streets from now, the houses are completely destroyed. 
Do you have any friends or relatives in Araby, you know, that have sustained damage? Have you heard from any of your neighbors? No, I, I just moved into the neighborhood, and I do not have any friends or relatives around the area. But, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just glad that we are fine. I would imagine right now you are thankful that that didn't yeah. come your way. Yeah, because our house just flooded from Hurricane Ida in La Plaza. And uh, we moved over here, you know, trying to look for a safer space. And now we have, you know, the tornado ha happening right behind our house. Oh, dear. Oh, goodness. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So you escape Laplace and the floods in Ida. And then you, mm -hmm. you give us this incredible video, as David says, to be this close, to hear that sound. Yeah. It was really, it was really, really loud. And then the, uh, when the lighting was happening, like I could see so many colors, like it was yellow, it was blue, and then it was a little bit of purple too. And then on the third time that we saw the lightning, that's when the light went out. All right, and obviously those were the power flashes mm -hmm. with all the uh, utilities. The, the transformers right. possibly blowing. Yeah. Esmeralda, how long would you say this whole thing lasted? Uh, it probably, I mean, from the time that it was right in front of my house, it was about a minute that passed all the way to the to the water. Well, again, uh, it's the one thing that I ask people not to do, but you <laughs> did, and I'm just glad that it turned out okay this time for you uh, and your family, and, and, and glad uh, that you guys are safe. But again, it uh, doesn't appear there's any major damage to your house as the storm went by just a few blocks away, correct? Yeah, correct. Thank God nothing happened to the house, nothing happened to us or our neighbors. Right. And I can see now that some of our neighbors have already power, so hopefully we'll be getting power soon. Well, some we... of your neighbors have power? Yeah, I can see uh, from, from uh, here that one of my neighbors already turned the light on. Well, it could be that they have a generator. Possibly. That, that, Maybe. Might, that could be a possibility. Well, thank you so much, Esmeralda. I'm glad that you and your family uh, are safe tonight and uh, that apparently at least your home has avoided the worst. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, stay safe. Yeah. And she and her family are so fortunate being mm. so close to that damage. Amanda Roberts um, has been bringing us um, some of the images. She has been in the neighborhood around Benjamin and Patricia Streets in Araby. And, and uh, we'll get back to Amanda in just a moment, but I understand that St. Bernard Parish President Guy McGinnis is ready to give us an update. Let's listen in. Um, I know they're, they're, we're waiting. We are live on the air. Okay. Okay. Are we good? My name is Guy McKenna, St. Paul Parish President. Uh, we've had a tornado um, land in Araby here in St. Paul Parish. From the south side to the north side, we have widespread damage. We have a lot going on tonight. Our first responders and our deputies are out there doing a great job. So before um, we get into anything more, so I want to turn this over to our Sheriff Palmer. Sheriff? Thank you, President McGinnis. Uh, early this evening, we uh, had a tornado touchdown again in Araby, as everybody knows. It started uh, right across the river and then went northbound all the way up to the marsh area located behind Cattle Park Southern there. There's widespread damage uh, from where it touched down in the old Araby area and Friscoville area all the way up to the Carolyn Park and St. Paul Heights area. There's heavy damage to, to multiple structures uh, in the area. They have uh, multiple injuries in, in the area. Most has been transported to the hospital, has been treated on the scene by uh, first responders. The Sheriff's Department and the St. Bernard Fire Department made their initial response. Uh, they currently are still out in the field on what's called a hasty search and rescue efforts right now. And as soon as we get some of the areas cleared up a little bit, we're safely to send more people out to do more of a thorough search, a grid search, which is uh, likely to go into the early morning hours. Uh, we'll continue our search. Uh, currently, we have the Louisiana State Police, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, the, um, the St. Bernard Fire Department, uh, New Orleans Fire Department, Acadia and EMS, New Orleans EMS, 
along with the state fire marshals, all uh, assisting us in our efforts right now. Uh, it's going to go uh, throughout the night and into the early morning hours. And I was just informed earlier there is one confirmed death uh, as a result of this tornado touching down in the area. Thank you, Sheriff. Just so you know, everyone knows our Homeland Security Director John Ram is marshalling all of the resources um, throughout the state. Um, like the sheriff said, um, you know, they're accompanying to the parish right now. We're asking any community out there that's willing to help to call us first before you come. There's a lot that's going to be going on. The National Guard's here, the state police is here. We have units, um, first responder units from Baton Rouge. The support is overwhelming. We are setting up a uh, shelter for citizens that were affected by uh, the tornado. Um, they need to call um, or seek a firefighter or a sheriff's deputy on the scene. And we have buses waiting to take you to uh, a complex that, that will provide shelter for you or your family or bring you to a family member. So this is going to be a long haul. Um, just got off the phone with the governor and his team at GOSEP. Um, tomorrow we will have a better assessment of all of the homes, the number of homes, the number of people affected, and we're going to make sure that we get all of the information on the injuries that um, were reported brought to the hospital. We don't have all of that information yet, but like the sheriff said, we do have one confirmed death. That all of that information um, we can't give you at this time. So. We have a lot of work going on, a lot of good people, making sure that our citizens are protected, making sure that our neighborhoods that were affected are going to be secure overnight um, and safe. Entergy, Atmos, uh, is on the scene, um, fixing as many problems as, as they see. Um, our thoroughfares have been cleared. Um, I believe um, we can pass through Judge Perez and St. Claude at this time, our road crews did a um, great job again, like, like they always do, but um, we're just asking all of the communities that want to help, all of the people that want to help, please contact us first and we will give you direction of how you can help. So, um, with that said, um, the Sheriff and I will take some questions. Where is the shelter? Okay, sorry. Um, the, the shelter is going to be at the Valerie's Complex. But I want, I want to make sure that I reiterate that this is for families that were affected by the storm. You said Del Reese Complex? Val Reese, Del Reese Sports Complex in St. Paul Parish. Could, could you tell us more information about the, the one person who died during this one? Not at this time. Do you know how many families of Val were displaced? We, we don't. We know it's widespread. We know that it's plenty. Um, but we don't have an assessment on the number of homes at this time. Can you tell me, if you had to guess the blocks or mile square area, what would you estimate the area that's been affected? It, it, it's in the Araby area from south to north, from the river to um, the 40 Open Levee, which is a couple of miles, Sheriff, would you say? Um, and we have homes along that whole stretch that were severely damaged, some more than others. But like I said, we have a home that was lifted off this foundation and put into the middle of the street right around the corner from here. So it looked like it took pretty much a straight line. And um, we, we will have all of those assessments um, tomorrow morning, first thing. Do you all have any information? There might be an ongoing search right now for a young boy in one of the homes. Did y'all have any information or indicators on that? No, no. How that might be going? We, we search it, and, and as we learn information, if anybody suggests we'll make sure we, we do a thorough search in that area. But I have not had any reports of, of a young boy uh, being missing right now. You said from south to north, from the river to the levee. Yes, ma'am. Have you, uh, have any of your people had to rescue people from inside collapsed houses or can you describe any of the rescue yeah. or search operations that have done? Well you can imagine you know the type of damage that you have construction when a tornado passes through. But yeah we had uh, several rescues uh, the fire department conducted. In one particular neighborhood or 
mainly it was uh, in the, the St. Claude Heights area and the, uh, on Benjamin Street, those areas. We had one rescue, a home that was actually picked up and, and came down in the middle of the street. Young young um, girl was on a ventilator. Her father was looking for firefighters to come help, come help, and they were already in there taking care of the young lady, and, and she's doing fine. But that's the one rescue that I saw um, happening on the scene. That was it. The same house that got yes, sir. relocated. She was inside of it. Yes, sir. The whole family was out. They were worried about the young girl, and they were. She um, was on a ventilator. She was on a ventilator. They they were trying to find someone to help, and our firefighters were already in the home taking care of the young lady. You know how long it took for the tornado to move the area? No, sir. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot more than there really was. Uh, I, I want to I want to add to this, man. I, the, the local news and, and the weather uh, coverage that, that you guys done uh, was wonderful. The, the alerts that we got from the National Weather Service, you know, we we, we had a heads up that it was coming. I, I was monitoring my radio when when uh, we were notified about the, uh, it was going to touch down, and, and they already gave an estimate of maybe 11 minutes or something like that, and it was right on time. And, and Hit, you know, we saw it get not, not only observations from the deputies, but also multiple phone calls from residents who live in that area confirming that a tornado did, did touch down. Look, I, I want to say, I know the sheriff feels the same way, but the support from everyone right after, during, and up until now, the, um, our governor, we spoke to our governor, we spoke to, um, had information from Senator Richmond, checked on us. Sheriff Pinto, Jefferson Parish is here tonight coordinating with the sheriff. So it's overwhelming. Um, it's going to be needed. And uh, we have a long road ahead of us in, in, in this recovery. And um, I feel very confident that uh, we're going to come out of this uh, better than we were before. Do we have an age on the fatality by any chance? We have zero information on the fatality that we can share at this point. You know how many people are hospitalized right now? No, sir. We have multiple um, reports of people going to the hospital. We don't have a number um, or the severity of the injuries. And we'll, we'll have something tomorrow once we have a lot of this information. Um, we will coordinate with the Sheriff's Department and um, have another conference or put out a statement. And, and again, again, if you have no business being in the IRB area, it's not a time to come back here and try to sightsee. You know, we're going to have plenty of deputies and you know, law enforcement agencies up here patrolling the streets to make sure that everybody who don't belong up here stays out of here. Yeah, and, and just listen to what we're telling you. you know, we, we don't want to have any problems with you, but our guys are going to engage you if you got no business back there. This might be another question that it might be too early to tell. Um, any idea of a number of missing people? We, we have no reports of missing people. No. At this time. All right, any other questions? Yeah. All right, thank y'all very much. Thank y'all. At 1018. We have just heard the first update from St. Bernard Parish officials after a devastating tornado uh, decimated much of Araby tonight. The, the last 2020 census had a population there of close to 5,000 people. So there are a lot of folks there, a lot of homes there, a lot of devastation and heartbreak tonight. One person confirmed dead, but this is still very early in a search and rescue as they try to make sure no one else is trapped there tonight. We've been listening to Sheriff Jimmy Pullman and Parish President Guy McGinnis talking about how once that tornado crossed over the Mississippi River and moved over the old Araby area, Friscoville onto Carolyn Park and St. Claude Heights and then north of there into the marshy area. They've told us, as Liz mentioned, one death, multiple injuries, but we don't know the severity of those injuries and we don't know how many people were taken to the hospital. We'll get that information, they believe, tomorrow, but they say right now 
If you don't have any business being in Araby, don't go to that area because search and rescue is on scene. They've been there and that will likely continue into the morning hours. So they have many more hours in the dark where they have to try and make sure um, if they need to find anybody. No reports of anyone missing at this point, so that's good news. But they also have support from the National Guard on scene and Louisiana State Police. Yeah, 17 years ago, it was uh, St. Bernard Parish water rescues. Katrina, the, the levees failed and it was all underwater. Tonight, uh, March 22nd, it's a tornado that has left so much heartbreak in that small community tonight. And they say they're going to be out there all night and they're going to continue searching. They're going to be there to, to help as many people that need that help. They don't have a lot of details and that's understandable. It's dark, it's out there. But this is a video that really captures uh, the the tornado crossing the river before it went on to cause so much it, devastation. Let, let me, uh, David Bernard here, let me kind of describe. I, I, I saw this video and right there, you see that? Right there, when it was over the river, that tornado grew into a very large funnel. Now, part of that was the water it was, it was picking up, but we can also see uh, on Viper in a minute, I'll show you that that's when the rotation really intensified is right when it was moving uh, out of Algiers and in the Gretna area and, and hit the river and then uh, uh, into Araby. That's when that tornado got super strong. And then look at that as it hits those transformers and all those begin to blow. Really, uh, this video tells the story of what happened is that storm crossed over from the West Bank to the East Bank. And uh, this also uh, defeats all the old wives tales of uh, tornadoes don't cross rivers and all that kind of stuff you used to hear uh, back in the old days. Uh, so that's pretty dramatic. Let me show you on Viper uh, what we've been showing all night. And this is just an estimate on my part because the tornado, you, this means intense rotation. The yellow is super strong and right there over the river, there's a little spot of yellow as it was making its way to Airby. But I kind of drew a line where over northern portions of Lake Salvador across the West Bank and Araby, that's 16, 17, 18 miles. Now, was this tornado on the ground, those full 18 miles? Probably not from the kind of damage we saw in Jefferson's Parish. It was much more spotty, uh, but it gives you an idea of how strong that circulation was. And it probably was on the ground as a water spout when it was over the marsh. And then as it moved into the West Bank, maybe a little bit of a weakening there. And then boom, re-intensifying right there uh, over Araby as, as the storm uh, moved on through. It's a little misleading by the mapping. It looks like, and we haven't heard of damage in the Holy Cross area. I'm not saying that there wasn't any, but obviously the worst of the damage is just a little offset from where you see that strong rotation here in Araby, uh, that's where that seems to be concentrated the most. So that kind of gives you an idea. Uh, it verifies what that video was showing. And then right there, you see that kind of that yellow speck indicating where the rotation may have gotten a little bit stronger, guys. And so David, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say when it passed over the Mississippi River, that sort of fueled it when we saw it get wider. And then you mentioned the multi-vortex. It looked like those areas kind of appeared on the outside, multiple areas of uh, more spinning. Right, more violently spinning air around the main funnel. Certainly that was evident on some video that I saw earlier today. It's a little bit hard to tell uh, from this distance uh, what's happening, but what you can tell is that the circulation did get larger and it did get more intense. And also we have ground truth because the damage on the West Bank isn't anything compared to what happened right there uh, as it crossed in the Araby. What a scary sight uh, that is. When you think um, you get some more details and how do you think this will compare to what we saw in eastern New Orleans in terms of the scale and the, the power of this tornado? Well, again, as far as the scale goes, we won't know that until, you know, we've got daylight and see the full extent of it all. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty similar. Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I guess I've learned never say never. I mean, after the New Orleans East tornado and, and I went up in our chopper and and went over that and surveyed that damage. And I'd seen a lot of tornado damage over the years, and that was some of the worst I'd ever seen. Uh, so when we get in there tomorrow and look at this, I imagine that's gonna rank up there as some of the worst I've seen. I don't know if I thought we would see another tornado of this magnitude in my lifetime go right through the city. I mean, the chance of that is very slim. That New Orleans East tornado is the strongest one on record for Orleans Parish. And you know, in our newsroom, everybody's phones started going off with those emergency alerts. 
you were talking about the tornado warnings on air. We had push alerts. I mean, more and more people are connected well, let, through let, technology and, now, and, and hopefully that helped. That really is true, Shelley. And one thing uh, that came out of the New Orleans East tornado, we didn't have any fatalities, as I recall. I think that's correct. I think that's correct. I don't think we had any fatalities. I hope I'm not wrong about that. Uh, and it was really a miracle. And one of the reasons was it was largely residential and a lot of people were at work. Uh, that helped. But it comes up on everyone's phone. And so, you know, it used to be that if you weren't in front of the TV, you didn't know what to do. But now if you have the weather app, the Fox 8 weather app, you know, it's going to alert you wherever you are that you're in an area of potential danger. And it, it just undoubtedly has made a huge difference. And also there was a lot of warning on this tornado. Remember, I mean, the first tornado warning, you know, came out like a half hour before across Jefferson Parish. So there was a long lead time on this before it reached Airby. But here's the problem. You see this picture we're seeing right here? This house that's totally destroyed. Where do you go? We don't have basements. This isn't Kansas. This right. isn't Oklahoma. Uh, and so, and, and you know, our, our homes are not built to withstand winds of 130, 150 miles per hour that could have occurred with this storm. And so, you know, we say get to the center of your house, get away from the windows, cover your head with a helmet, with, with blankets and pillows. But if you're up against that, it comes down to luck if you're going to survive something like this. Yeah, we heard from one man earlier in Araby, and he said he felt like he was lifted up a little bit even though he had taken shelter. Well, and, and then there was a tornado uh, the other day, and I can't remember where it was in the Midwest, but somebody was literally tossed out of their home into the woods. I mean, that's, I believe, the account that that person gave, that that was definitely uh, what they felt tonight, what, what was the real thing. Uh, but it's just, it's a tornado of this intensity, and with our kind of homes and without basements, uh, you just got to get lucky. And nice. hopefully tonight, we can limit the damage and, and, and the death toll to where we are now. We, we've sadly confirmed we've lost one person. We know others are injured. Uh, darkness is difficult to figure out, you know, what's going on. I know earlier tonight that people were calling from bathrooms saying they were trapped. Uh, but hopefully that's all they are, trapped, and those people are going to eventually get out. And I imagine tomorrow as the sun rises, we'll hear more of those harrowing tales of what you guys are saying. If people lift it up, maybe some of those folks are in hospitals right now from those injuries after they were just pushed by the storm into the air and went flying. Uh, David Jones has been in Araby all night. Uh, David, what is the latest there? Yeah, hey, we're on Easy Street and Alexander Avenue in Araby. Uh, right now, you can see the sheriff's office is actually going through and they're checking all these houses. They're banging on doors, um, you know, trying to find survivors. Um, you know, hopefully these, these houses are, are, are empty, but you can see the scale of the devastation. I know I heard a little bit earlier that Dave was saying, or David was saying, um, you know, it's, it's dark out and we have to wait until morning to really get um, an idea of the full scale of this devastation. But from what we can see here, I mean, it's, this is, 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 bad. I mean, it's, it's rampant. You can see the detectives going up there, um, you know, searching through that, that home there. Um, yeah, we, we did hear from our, my, my boss actually spoke with the, um, with either the man who owns the house or a friend who owns, who, a friend of the man who owns the house. Um, so I do, I think he's, I think, I think he's safe. That safe. the owner's safe. Yeah. Sorry. She, she spoke to someone who, so the owner, yeah, yeah. Thank you. No worries. Um, yeah. So you again, again, we're on we're on Easy Street here, just showing you a little bit of what we're seeing here. Um, I mean, so much debris on the ground, insulation on the ground, pieces of house, pieces of siding. Um, you know, poles ripped up. Um, here, let's come up. We can come up a little bit here and give you a better view of this home. Um, I mean, this home was just devastated. You can see it's it's just a, a, a wreck. Um, all right, they were able to gain entry there, so. Of course, very hopeful that uh, that no one's inside uh, this house at the time. Again, we don't believe that there is, um, but they're gonna do a quick sweep just to, just to be safe on the safe side. Um, we have seen, not in this area, but um, more towards St. Claude, we've seen a lot of people out uh, milling around. Um, you know, I mean, you, you heard the St. Uh, Bernard Parish president 
a little bit earlier, ask that people not come outside, not mill around, not take videos and photos and, you know, observe the damage. We've seen a lot of that um, by St. Claude. Not so much here up by uh, up on Easy Street, um, but really we just, we. I know you don't have power. I know you want to you go outside and, and survey the damage, look at your own home, but please stay, do your best to stay out of the way of these first responders who really have a monumental task ahead of them um, as they start to clean up here. I'll throw it back to you guys now in the studio. It's just heartbreaking seeing all of that. And, and so many people tonight are either injured or worried about where their next place will be to call home. I'm thinking about the elderly people or the people yeah. with young children or babies or people who might be, you know, have disabilities and can't really physically get places. But we do know that the, sh the sheriff and the parish president said that there is a shelter for citizens who absolutely need it at the Val Reese complex in Chalmette. They say find a firefighter, find a sheriff's deputy and they will somehow get you there. Right. And, and once again, try to avoid the area if you don't have a reason to be there. Amanda Roberts, too, has been there in Araby all night, bringing us some of those scenes and and the search and the, the hope that that number, that death toll will not go any higher. Amanda. Yes, yeah, so we are at Benjamin and Alexander. We've come down the street a little bit, but this is really as far as first responders are letting us go. They say that it's way too dangerous, that there are way too many power lines, way too many nails, glass people have uh, stepped on. And so that's a, a potential danger around here. This is an entire power pole with transformers that are down. Just the damage everywhere we go is, is shocking. I, the word devastating has been used time and time again because this is, it's just shocking to see all of this, especially all of these homes that people have worked so hard for. Uh, we're looking at one home you can almost see through the roof right now. Um, so just the damage is very sporadic. Uh, it, it, as you keep on walking, you seem to see more and more damage. So it's it's really just shocking. But uh, the Barnes family right here, you all said you're living a couple streets over, yeah. but you're still safe. Your house is safe. Our house is safe. My family is safe. And it was the scariest thing we ever went through. Prayed a lot, went in the closet, held each other tight. We heard the tornado going through down the street and we just prayed and prayed and God saved us. Did you have any idea the magnitude of, of what was going on outside of your door? No, I heard David Bernard said a tornado was coming, not even thinking about how big and strong it would have been. I've, we've never experienced a tornado and it was petrifying. So you've never experienced a tornado yeah. and was it minutes? Was it seconds between when you went to your safe place? It was actually pretty fast. I would say maybe a minute. Um, like we knew when it was gone, we, we heard it come and go and we went out on a, on a porch and we actually watched it go toward New Orleans East. It was, it was crazy. but. We're safe. We, we were in our safe place for about, for about two minutes because uh, when, when David Bernard said it was in Bell Chase, it's right across the river from us and I looked out the window and I could see all the transformers on the other side of the river and I said, it's time to go. So, and after we got in there, it was maybe two minutes and just, the shaking and the rumbling, it, yeah, it was the incredible. Of the house, it was, it was crazy. It was scary. I've never been this scared before, never. He was speechless, which is not unlike him. <laughs> Why do you think that uh, you said you were ne you've never been this scared before? What about tonight was, was so shaky? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you're thinking about your family because, you know, what if you know, how, to, how do I protect my children? Um, and just the unknown, that, that's, that's the scariest part. Yeah, the, cause there was a few things hitting our houses, our house on, from the outside, and you just don't know the outcome. So when you say shaking, the house was literally shaking. Was, yeah, our house is raised, and it was, rumbling. and it was, the house was shaking. It was rumbling. Like we park underneath our house, and it was, it was shaking, it was, Pretty scary. All I did was hang on to the doorknob and <laughs> hang on to the kids, and, <laughs> and we are right. <laughs> and so I know we met you all because you came here to see that your other family was okay. Yes. Yeah.
yes, my niece lives down the street and her area is not too good right now, but her family's safe as well. So that's more praise, more prayers answered. And we're gonna see how she is. Give her a hug. I, d did you guys call her or did you just kind of come out here because- We called her, we called her yeah. and she, we she told us about the neighbor's house and uh, it was like, oh my God. And they thought they had more damage than they did, but they have two young children. And it would have been devastating because I know they've confirmed some people missing already. And you don't want it to be anybody, but you know, when it's your family, it's a little bit more rough. And I I was going to say, that's what makes it more special, that, that you all are able to be together, yes. that you were able to check on your family, yes. and your family's okay. We're yes. all a little shaken, but yes. everyone's accounted for. Yes. Right, yes. Is that a little of how we're feeling? Absolutely. Yes. yes, we are blessed. Everybody is accounted for and together. So, yes. How did you guys do? Was it a pretty, as scary as mom and dad were saying? It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I don't want to go through something like that ever again. I think it was maybe worse than a hurricane. I mean, I've never seen this type of damage before, ever. It, it was terrifying. It felt, it felt so long, but so short at the same time. I think I prayed, I think I prayed the hardest I've ever prayed in my uh, life before. And thankfully God answered our prayers. It was absolutely horrifying. Well, you're very brave and you got some very loving parents with you. Yes. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys are okay. I'm Thank glad you. your family's okay. You. Glad the house is okay. Yes. We yes. still have to rebuild, but I mean, we know that our neighbors, uh, you know, some of them are not so lucky. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that is the situation from Araby right now. Uh, you know, we're still figuring out the magnitude of this devastation of this tornado, uh, but that's the situation live in Araby. Amanda Roberts, Fox 8 Local First. And Amanda, uh, that is one incredibly lucky family tonight that you're standing with there and the words that that little boy so many people can relate to I prayed I never prayed so hard but I, I really what struck me is what they said is that they were there to check on someone else family members and that just goes to the heart of the community of Araby because so many people there they're all living close to their family members so when this hit it's not just you you worry about your sister your aunt and your cousin down the street Absolutely. We have talked to so many people who said, came up to us and said, I'm okay. I'm just here to see that my neighbor's okay. I'm just here to see that my friend is okay. I came here to check that my, uh, you know, acquaintance who I saw, everyone was out here trying to check to make sure that their loved one's okay. And everyone, from what we saw, people were doing it on foot, walking through all of this. And that's what's so uh, kind of scary at the same time is because people are, I, I don't want to say risking their lives so much, but this is a dangerous situation. If someone were to not have a light or not have the proper footwear or trip on some of this transformer that uh, power may still be on. It, it, it is a scary situation to be traversing the dark streets after this kind of damage, after this kind of situation. Power lines are still down. Tree branches are uh, everywhere. Uh, there's metal roof and wrapping that's just wrapped over like tinfoil. Uh, Tr trucks have been shattered. Uh, there are trailers that are everywhere. Uh, so yes, uh, people are traversing these potentially very dangerous obstacles just to see if their loved ones are okay. And that's something that I think we can all understand and relate to, but it's still scary. And so we're at this crossroads where there are first responders here telling us we can't go any further. Um, and, and the Barnes family was just waiting to see if they're niece was going to be okay if their niece was going to be safe and healthy um so luckily you know with some help from the first responders we were able to figure that out but you know it does take some time people again they're walking on foot reversing these potentially dangerous obstacles just to find out if their loved ones are okay and thankfully you know a lot of these stories are ending up like this but there are those stories those families that are going to be hurting tonight and our thoughts and prayers are with them so strongly because this is it's so hard to see. It's so hard to see. I'm sure, Amanda, for us, it looks really bad, you know, on the TV, but you being there in person and seeing it up close, it's probably 10 times worse. It, it, it really is. It's, um, 
it, it's it's one thing to see it through the screen. It's another thing to see it with your eyes because it's it's 360. It's all the way around. People are carrying flashlights and that's really all that you can use to see. The, it's really all the light that we have here because the power is just out. We talked about coming across the canal into Araby and, and you could tell that this is where the storm had touched down because the entire city is just in darkness. The entire city is just in darkness. And, and so people are just having to carry their lights, walking on the streets to see uh, what they can find and what family members and what loved ones they can find. Um, power lines, they're, they're tipped over. Um, you know, the power lines are down. And uh, I think Tommy is saying that there's, there's something of, of note over here. And it's just one of, this is the nature of what I'm talking about when it's dark and this, this storm has passed through that we have to go step by step, block by block and see what's happened here. Look at this house here, some piece of metal, it might be roofing, it might be, you know, some piece from someone's garage. It's really hard from someone's shed. We talked to someone earlier that their shed had been completely lifted and was gone. Um, their house was okay, but we don't know what this kind of wrapping is. Power line is down, you know, it's knocked against this, this car here. The roof in this home is damaged. And from what you can tell, Amanda, a chair is tipped over from some of these houses. What was that significant damage from what you can tell? I mean, are most of these people out? Have they gotten to a safe place like like the shelter, the Valerie's complex where we heard uh, the parish president say people were being taken to or people kind of staying put until maybe the sunlight in the morning? So it, really every family, every situation is different. Some families that their house is okay, that they feel like they can stay here. But we had some people come up to us and are like, where do I go? Who, who is going to help me now? I, I have no way to get out of here. My house is damaged. I, I need help. Um, so I think there's stories of, of all of those spectrums from across that spectrum, people who whose houses are fine. Uh, we, we spoke with one family earlier who they were holding on to their little one, to their child, um, just hoping that he would be OK. Uh, they said that they could just feel the house shake and that there was a little collision. They would come out their front door to see their across the street neighbor. Their house was completely leveled. But but the house that they were in taking shelter in is all essentially fine just a little two by four that came into the roof which is damaged nonetheless but uh you know it's it's not a, a com it's not an issue of comparison here because they're across the street neighbor house was demolished so that's just the weird thing about these tornadoes is you're across the neighbor house can be demolished but your house can be absolutely fine because of how weird this track is I mean, McDonald's saying that the cypress tree looks like it's just been snapped. It, it really does. You can, the branches. Amanda. It just looks like the top of the tree got snapped off. And Amanda, a question for, for you. We see after hurricanes how long it takes for power to be restored. Based on the damage you're seeing there, are we looking at weeks? I know you're not an energy expert, so to speak, but based on what you're seeing there, this could be a long haul before power is back on. It does look like it, it might be some time. I know that crews, I think Entergy put out and said that they are diligently working. Um, I will say it's not like every single power pole is down. Yes, there is a lot of damage um, and it does look like the damage is uh, a little more widespread where we are because this is, it does look like um, there, that this area was touched by a tornado or I will say not all of these poles are snapped. Uh, you know, we would drive around after Hurricane Ida and see that a lot of these poles were snapped and they had to come in, bring in new poles, install new poles, string up new wires, new um, power lines. Uh, so. All right. I think we just actually lost uh, Amanda. So but um, obviously it looks like ground zero. The, the neighborhood where she is. Ground Zero uh, going through it.
one more time another tragedy and we've heard you know even one woman tonight said I escaped from Laplace from the floods there from, from Ida, Ida went there she didn't get any damage sent us an incredible video of the tornado nonetheless there are probably other stories like that people who moved there and survived Katrina rebuilt and then this tonight and now to go through a tornado so March 22nd 2022 will be a date that we will never forget uh, David Bernard joining us now um, with the very latest and, and a recap and a look at our weather. Well, we're going to do a, a brief look uh, at the weather tonight. Uh, in fact, let me see. I don't think I had. Let's go. To, if we could go to weather one, actually, if we go to max one, uh, let's switch to that. Uh, there are still big storms near the mouth of the river, uh, but for all intents and purposes, the storms have ended for us. But uh, guys, it looks like just near Gulf Shores, we had a tornado across the barrier island, a confirmed tornado has struck on the barrier island between Dolphin Island, Gulf Shores. It looks like just on the other side of Orange Beach. Uh, and now this is moving up east of Fairhope. So this is in Mobile Bay where they're getting the tornado activity now. So that's where the tornado watch is now, Alabama and into the Florida Panhandle. The weather is over for southeast Louisiana and Mississippi. Here's our rotation tracker tonight on Viper, two tornadoes. Here's the tornado that went through Araby. There's the path, the rotation path. And then an even more significant rotation path uh, that started over the causeway, uh, came in uh, across uh, the North Shore, moved across Highway 190, and then uh, eventually uh, into the woods and knocked down a ton of trees. But fortunately, as far as we know, there has not been major structural damage on the North Shore. Again, there may be some homes we haven't heard about, and we'll see that tomorrow at first light. But clearly, uh, this rotation path to the south, that was the big tornado uh, that hit around Araby. Uh, highest wind gusts, uh, these are just, that was reported at the Naval Air Station and at the airports around town. A lot of this was just from the wind blowing today, uh, but 56 miles per hour at Bell Chase uh, as that storm and tornado made its closest approach there. You can see it was 48 in Kenner, 49 at the lakefront. Here we go tomorrow, look at this. Cooler, beautiful, sunny, no weather problems. Look at this. Guys, we're great for the rest of the week and into the weekend. We're going to have spectacular spring weather, no severe weather, no rain chances. We're going to have a chance to help people start to recover uh, from what is widespread damage. Again, in Upper St. Bernard, primarily in Araby, there's been spotty damage in Jefferson and parts of Orleans tonight. We know in, in New Orleans East, um, some very minor damage, some trees, but clearly the heart of it. Uh, has been in Araby, and there's what's left of the storms tonight. Again, moving off the mouth of the river. The good news tonight is uh, these storms are ending, and we've got that great springtime weather ahead. Okay, thanks a lot there, David. Uh, a life-changing night for so many people in the community of Araby as they, they start to try to figure out what's next for them after that devastating tornado. And we talked earlier about the power of the storm. We do have uh, pictures of exploding transformers tonight. Yeah, this video uh, was taken from Mealy Street in Araby. And uh, from this view, you can just see those flashes of, of lights. Those are those transformers exploding. And we heard this, it happened in Gretna on the west bank of Jefferson before the storm moved over uh, to the east bank in St. Bernard. And those are classic signs when, when you have a tornado like that. And um, very dangerous situation when that's going on. We also have some video that was taken from the Shelmet Battlefield area, which is right along the river and St. Bernard Highway. And from that view in Shelmet, looking back at the tornado as it was moving through Araby. And tonight it's Araby, but really at the start of today, it could have been any one of our communities tonight. We all live here and call here home. And when these tornadoes start moving in, as they started earlier today, the question was who would feel the brunt of it? Tonight, it is the uh, community of Araby. Uh, one person confirmed dead, according to the parish president. No details on that individual. Several people injured. Uh, they have been taken to hospitals receiving treatments. Also, the Valerie's Complex is a place where there's so many people who literally have no place to go tonight. So that would be the location where they're helping some of those folks tonight. They've lost their homes. Some of them completely leveled. They've lost their cars. So many people, they say, if you know someone in need of help to find a firefighter or a sheriff's deputy, they will get you to a safe place tonight. And we're going to need that good weather mm. in the days to come as the rebuilding 
begins and the assessment of all the damages. Um, David Jones and Natasha Robin are live in Araby Forest tonight with more on the devastation. Yeah, hey, we're on Center Street and Prosperity Street. I'm here with Natasha Robin. Um, Natasha, can you talk to me about what you saw tonight? So basically, you know, I got here a couple hours ago. We've been walking all throughout this area, throughout Araby. Um, ended up back around Benjamin. Um, really, really bad stuff. I mean, the devastation is so great. There are so many people um, who are outside. It's pitch black out here. They can't see anything. And they're just looking around, trying to see what they could salvage. In some cases, homes completely destroyed. And then you look a few homes down, and they're un it's untouched. So, you know, and they're... There are nails everywhere. There are power lines down you know, everywhere. So you have to be really careful. And, um, you know, David, we were just looking right here behind us um, and we're closer to, to Judge Perez. Um, yeah. and, and we were just talking about this, but this looks like a command post meeting that's going on with the fire department, of course, all back here, the sheriff's department. Um, you know, it's, it's all hands on deck at this point. Yeah. And you're from St. Bernard. Can you talk to me a little bit about this community and how this is going to impact this community going forward? I mean, look, this community is so tight knit, um, not just here in Araby, but in St. Bernard Parish. And so I, I've been getting a ton of messages on Facebook. Check on my family. Is, is everybody out you know what's going on on this street and so everybody's already super concerned about what's happening right here in Araby um, you know these streets in in, in so many ways uh, mean so much to the parish um, you know it, it, everybody sticks together here they have no doubt that that come daylight there are going to be a ton of people in here just helping this community rebuild and start picking up the pieces. Um, it's dark out here tonight and so many people you know we saw um, somebody just a little while ago coming down there they're wheeling suitcases right because there's no power. Um, a lot of these homes are destroyed. They can't stay here, obviously. Um, so they're trying to find a place to stay tonight. I mean, it's, they need a lot of help um, right here in Araby. We can see it. I know that this community is going to come together and, and they're going to make something happen come daylight. I, I just know it. And we've seen the responders going door to door to check on these properties. I've even seen people who, you know, their houses weren't damaged, maybe they had a little bit of damage, um, coming out and going door to door, checking on people who, who they don't even know who live here, uh, what does that tell you about Araby? Well, Araby's close-knit. Um, I mean, St. Bernard Parish, is, it's a close-knit community all the way around. Um, I can tell you, I, I talked to the parish president by phone. I know he held a news conference. I did not hear that news conference, but I did talk to him by phone, and he told me that um, one fatality uh, confirmed here in Araby. He also told me that multiple people were at the hospital with injuries. He didn't know the severity of those injuries. You look around, I mean, it's amazing. And, and look, we don't know. I'm, I know they're still assessing the damage. They're still going house to house, but it's amazing that, that we didn't lose more people tonight. Uh, you know, it's just when you look at the devastation and the homes just flattened in some cases, um, we saw a truck wrapped around a pole. Um, I mean, it's just just the, the power of this tornado. You can just look around and see it was great. It yeah. was really great. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Natasha, for being out here and for your reporting on this. All right. So we're uh, we're live in Araby. David Jones, Fox 8, local first. Thank you, guys. And, and she's so dead on on that how tight knit that community is right you have so many generations that are living there and they will come together tomorrow to help their neighbors and to help their relatives too who just live down the street from them yeah i mean you said it best people in that very same neighborhood their cousins their mm -hmm. mother their brother but the parish president also said any community watching tonight if you're willing to help we're going to need the help moving forward so reach out and we've seen that in louisiana Louisiana yes. pulls together, especially the metro New Orleans area. Unfortunately, we've had to be tested so exactly. many times, but we always rise to the occasion. So many agencies there, they've got state police, uh, the National, National Guard. Guard. So these are the agencies perhaps you should reach out to first. I imagine the Red Cross will be there on the ground as soon as possible tomorrow. So many people will need a place to stay. They've probably lost everything if their home is completely decimated. But if you don't have to be in that area, if you live in other parts of St. Bernard, they're asking you to stay out of Araby, even though St. Claude Avenue, St. Bernard Highway, as well as Judge Perez, which turns into Claiborne, both of those areas have been cleared. They want you to stay out of the Araby area. Natasha talked about the debris on the ground. I think Amanda was talking about the nails. When you think about mm -hmm. homes that were totally ripped apart and picked up and moved, there's probably debris, piercing debris that could really do some damage. And the hospital probably has enough, their staff has enough on their hands right now with people injured from the actual tornado. They don't need to be dealing with that as well. Let's get some more perspective tonight from Amanda Roberts.
Well, we are still here at Benjamin Street and Patricia Street here in Araby, where people are really just starting to come out of their houses and see what's going on. People are starting to pick through their houses, you know, just across the street here. Uh, you can tell we, we spoke with Mr. Jason earlier, who's still trying to pick through the pieces of his house. Uh, you can tell that the tornado, the winds, they really just peeled back the top of his house, the roof. Then right next door, he was telling us his neighbor, a multi-story house here, all but leveled. You can just see so much debris tossed everywhere. Uh, we saw a, a floor that looked like it had been rocked off its foundation, a uh, trailer that's piled onto the debris there. Uh, all of this on the backdrop of power lines that are down, debris in the middle of the road. First responders are trying to clear it. However, when you look just across the street here at this house, everything is mostly fine. We, we were talking that there's maybe just a two by four with a screwdriver, David. I think you told me that came in through the top of the roof. Yeah, it's just stuck in the roof right there. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull it out tomorrow. I mean, as, if you could kind of take me through what you guys were seeing and experiencing when the storm came through. Well, we just heard a rumble. It was just a heard rumble. Heard a rumble. I told them it didn't sound right. And then we just, the first thing was I said, let's get to the bathroom. And I just put my arm up his shirt and held him on the floor. And yeah, it was just you like just a ball of debris. You just heard boom and smoke, and then it smelled like burning, and luckily we were unscathed. You yeah. think that boom and the smoking was maybe the two-by-four, or what do you... Debris hitting the house. I 100% yeah, uh, think so. I mean, obviously, after coming out and seeing everything that has transpired, yes, yeah. 100%, we were lucky. And I tell you, as soon as I walked out, as soon as I opened the door, I was like, I don't even want to really look at this, because you don't know what kind of you know, what you're gonna come across, you know? and But the first instinct is just run out and help, you know? And try yeah. not to get electrocuted by power lines. 100%, that's the mm -hmm. first thing I did was grab my trauma kit and try to run out and help any neighbors. Right, and... cause you're a nurse, Britain. Yes, yes, Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. yes. Uh, <laughs> did you find anyone or what, what did no, you? Well, no, our neighbor across the street, Jason and his son, yeah, um, found him in the they, house. they were entangled, but luckily their bathroom is in the center of the home and I just told him stay put, help is on its way, and I'm just so thankful my neighbor here seems to be out of town, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's what I really hope for in the morning. Yeah. Did you guys, how much time between when you got in the bathroom and when the storm hit, was it very quick, or were you waiting there for many minutes? Maybe it was 15 so, seconds? It was so fast. Yeah, like, I, I, heard, I heard the rumbling and just said, that doesn't sound right. He went to the door and he said, nope. And I just scooped him up and I said, Brittany, David, let's all get in the bathroom. And as I, it was really fast. Yeah, it was really fast. Hey, Jackson, was it shaking? What did the, what did the house do? Was it scary? Was it scary? Was it scary? It was pretty oh, scary early. Shy. Yeah, getting shy. I mean, looking out your door, seeing just all of this, and, and I, it's nighttime, you know, we haven't even seen the full extent of right. this. Are you guys feeling thankful? How, how are you feeling today? 100% yeah. thankful. I mean, after Undoubted. my mode went into, like, assessing and making sure everybody else was okay, I 100% came back in the house and cried. Yeah. I am, as a mom... 100% cried. I you just, were gripping him. This this was 100% the most terrifying thing I've ever been through in my life. Yeah. For sure. Well, I'm glad you guys are okay. Was there anything, Jackson, you wanted to say? You want to say something? Oh, no, we're being shy again. That's all right. All right, but at least we know he's good. You guys are safe. Um, we still have some rebuilding to do. I know, you know, you all are just dealing with a two-by-four, but just across the street, it is utter devastation. We don't have anything to be, uh, you know. We're lucky. We definitely, uh, we're, we're so lucky. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just the, the weird nature of these tornadoes, of these storms. Um, I know we're really going to just be talking to people and finding out their stories of survival um, and, and escape and near misses here as uh, we fully realize the extent of this tornado here in Araby. So reporting, I'm Amanda Roberts, Fox 8 Local First. And David, as you wrap up tonight, your thoughts? Well, we've definitely seen one of the worst tornadoes. 
uh, on the South Shore in the metropolitan area. Uh, this is going to rival the New Orleans East tornado. That was wow. an EF3 with 150 mile per hour winds. I can't say that tonight from a distance like that, but I can say it most certainly was a strong tornado, which would be classified as at least an EF2 tornado. I am surprised that more people did not lose their lives tonight when you see the scenes and we'll see even more of it tomorrow morning. And hopefully, you know, it's not more than that one person yeah. that we did lose. Um, remarkably, I went back and looked and I thought that was correct. We did not lose any lives in the New Orleans okay. East tornado. We had a number of people injured and quite severely uh, as we have tonight as well. As I said earlier, you know, bad luck. Uh, the forecast was for the potential for a strong tornado and there wasn't anything anywhere in southeast Louisiana all day. And in the last moment, we had the tornado over the lake and then the tornado over Lake Salvador that became the one that moved over the West Bank uh, and the East Bank. And it hit at the wrong place uh, and at the wrong time. That's for sure. Thank yeah. God for technology because Shelly and I heard at least twice tonight and probably more people who said they were listening to you and they knew in that moment they had to seek shelter. Well, I mean, thank goodness for the weather apps because uh, those do alert people now, whereas before a lot of times people would have no clue what was going on if you weren't in front of a TV or if you did not have a radio on. So that's one of the great things about the modern era of the internet and the apps is that it makes everybody really aware. And we did have a long lead time on this warning, at least a half hour or so uh, before it came out of the marshes in Jefferson Parish and then eventually uh, across the river and that made I know that had to have made a lot of difference. Right. Well, our hearts and prayers go out to the people of St. Bernard Parish tonight. Many families affected in northern St. Bernard and Araby. We're going to be thinking about you. Um, we're going to get more on the assessment as daylight comes uh, from the St. Bernard Parish officials. We're going to bring you the latest here on Fox 8 Morning Edition, which begins at 430, 430. in the morning. We thank you for watching. Stay safe.